year. You know these guys quite well at Stratford uh, because you coached them when they were sophomores. Yeah, the sophomore class was a, a real good class, and uh, these young men are class young men, and uh, they're going to play as hard as they can, and our guys will play harder as we can. And after the bowl game, they'll still be friends. Let's talk about the key, in my opinion, to tonight's ball game. Number 36 for you, Randy Payne, right now, 15, uh, 1,151 yards coming in. Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to give him ample opportunity to get <laughs> some more. Uh, but we, we've got a – Brian Rager is a pretty darn good fullback, and our passing attack's coming around if the other coaches can uh, – taught me into throwing it. All right, speaking of those other coaches, I know you want to give them some accolades too because they've done a fantastic job in pre preparing their team. Right, I, I feel like we're 7-0 for two reasons. One reason, of course, we have the players. Uh, you have to have talent. And these are not my assistant coaches, they're my co-coaches. Doug Newman, Fred Sadler, Chuck Lewis, and Bubba Spears. They are the main reason we, will, we are here tonight playing in front of this crowd. Well, Coach, good luck to you tonight and hopefully 8-0 uh, coming up uh, first thing in the morning. All right, I'll take it. Thank you. Jerry Pig, the coach of the Hunters Lane Warriors, and Duncan Stewart is standing by with Bob Leach, the head coach of Stratford. Thank you very much, Rick. Love that outfit, baby. Folks, we have got the great coach of Stratford, Bob Leach. And, Bob, your team this year, just a very special team. You've got to just really have a big place in your heart of all the teams you've coached for this one. Thank you, Duncan. Uh, great is when you win, uh, lousy is when you lose. I learned that a long time ago, but we've got a great bunch of boys. They're not just good football players, but they're fine young men. Yeah, they are. Uh, you know, this, this team, you've got balance. You've got, uh, in my opinion, without question, the finest backfield in Nashville, Tennessee. And if people key on Campbell, you got Downing. If they key on both of them, you got Hodges. If they key on all three, you got Fleming throwing the ball. You're going to have to have a ton of plays in your head to call tonight. We think we've got plenty of plays. That's not one of my shortcomings. My shortcomings is too many. <laughs> oh, I don't think so from watching your teams. Now, what to you is the key to beating Hunter's Lane tonight? I think we've got to play good defense tonight. I think we've got to have a good kicking game, and I think we've got to play our ball game and take what they give us. Are you going to have to key on Randy Payne, or are you going to just key on the whole team? I don't hardly believe in keying on one man because somebody else kills you when you do that. We just play our defense. This year, your offense, getting back to that for a minute, has, has run the ball superbly. You know, a lot of people don't realize, but you've got an ace in the hole in Fleming. He throws the ball real well. He hasn't had to, but if he had to, you certainly wouldn't hesitate to go to him, would you? Corey threw for eight out of nine against Antioch, the only team that really loaded on line scrimmage. Corey's a fine quarterback, and we won't hesitate to throw the ball. If you win this game, you're the champions of District 12 AAA. Is it difficult not to think ahead? Is it, is it difficult for you not to just concentrate on game by game and, you know, dream a little bit about maybe going to the playoffs and going a ways into them? Duncan, we, we play them one game at a time. This, this is the way we were taught way back a long time ago, and we play one ball game at a time. And you have fun doing it. Your team is one of the more fun teams in town. If you take the fun out of football, Duncan, that's what it's all about. Your kids have got to have fun. You, you can be serious and all that, but in the final analysis, there's got to be fun there. Well, yeah, it is a game, right? Right, it's a game. Well, Bob, I hope you have a fun game tonight, and uh, here's wishing you the best of luck and hoping you go 7-1 and one and keep trucking. Win or lose, we're going to have the fun. Thank you. All right, Bob, thank you very much. What a great guy. Bob Leach, the head coach of Stratford High School. Tonight's the big one for all the marbles in 12 AAA. Stay tuned. Next, Hunters Lane hosting Stratford in 12 AAA on Viacom 36. Records and video and Viacom Cablevision. More of what you're looking for. And we're back to... What is going to be an exciting football game this evening, Duncan? Hunters Lane, Stratford, for all the marbles, all everything them. right here tonight. 12 AAA is going to be decided that Hunters Lane as the Spartans and the Warriors get together. And we're about ready to go down for the coin toss. I tell you, this game is really a big, big game. Uh, and, I, and I just get the impression from talking to the two coaches that the attitudes of the two coaches are pretty different. Uh, Bob Leach is not nearly as intense about this game as Jerry Pig. Uh, Jerry, in his second year, built a program overnight at Hunter's Lane. Bob's been there so many times, he's kind of rolling with the punches, but underneath, i got to think he's feeling pretty intense, too. I think you're absolutely correct, Duncan, and they're on their way to the middle of the field where the senior group from Stratford will act as the captains. Number six, Daniel Pig. Number five, Donald Langston will be the captains for Hunter's Lane. Let's go down to the field now and get the official coin toss. Captain, Captain, Captain Campbell, Captain McClanahan. Let me introduce All right, let me introduce the crew to you, please. We have Mr. Chauncey, Mr. Willis, Mr. Smith, Mr. Mick, and we have Mr. Everett Sams. 
General, would y'all introduce yourselves to each other, please? General, you've been selected as captains by your coaches for your leadership ability, and we as officials are going to be looking to you for the same thing, okay? I have home team, I have visitors, I have a coin with tails and heads. I'm going to toss it in the air. If I drop it, we're going to pick it up and we're going to toss it again. Would you call the coin while it is in the air, please? Tails. What did he call? Tails. He did call tails, and as you can see, it is tails. So we have white winning the toss. You want to defer. You'd like to defer to the second half? All right, we have white deferring. Sir, your options are to receive. Or to, you'd like to receive. Which goal would you like to defend? You'd like to defend that goal. Would you stand right there and face me, please? Would you stand right here and face them? Start the first half, we're going to have the orange team receiving the ball. Gentlemen, let's have a good ball game. There, there it is, Duncan. The Hunters Lane Warriors are going to get the football first. Stratford winning the toss. They're going to defer to the second half. Joseph Campbell, number 21, and Kurt McClanahan, 82, acting as the captains for Stratford. Taking a look at the field conditions tonight, the temperature is 67 degrees. The wind southerly at 5 miles an hour. The forecast for tonight, partly cloudy skies and the surface this evening is going to be grass, a fine football field, a fine facility, a very new facility. Hunters Lane only in their second year. This is the first year that they've played uh, games at home, and we're glad to be here at this one. This is a big, big football game between Stratford and Hunters Lane. It sure is. Um, the Stratford team undefeated in 12 AAA, and the Hunters Lane team undefeated everywhere, including 12 AAA. Um, you and I spoke at the very beginning of the season about Nashville High School football, and both of us prognosticated that Stratford would indeed be the team to beat. And uh, I think even including their loss to White's Creek, they are the best team in town. Uh, we've seen Hunters Lane once. They were impressive. Uh, they didn't have their best game against Overton, although they managed to win quite handily. And uh, I look for a good game tonight. You're absolutely right, Duncan. Taking a look at the officials, the referee is Randy Hevener, the umpire Everett Sams, the head linesman W.O. Smith, the line judge Steve Chauncey, back judge Cliff Willis, and the clock operator is Jerry Mick. Taking a look at the two teams as they line up, Hunters Lane will be going left to right. They are dressed in orange pants, orange jerseys with blue numerals. Their helmets are blue. Stratford dressed in all white with orange numbers, black headgear. 12 AAA, Hunters Lane and Stratford, followed by McGavick, Maplewood, Glencliff, and Antioch. Kicking off for Stratford tonight will be number 66. There you see him, Lamont Stone, offensive lineman, injured in the opening game, a 7-6 loss against White's Creek. The deep backs for the Hunters Lane Warriors, number 36 in the middle. That's Randy Payne. He's the second-leading rusher right now in Nashville coming into tonight's ballgame. And we're about ready to get underway. Hunters Lane in Stratford. Duncan Stewart, I'm Rick Baumgartner. Glad you're along with us. It's going to be a lot of fun tonight. Sit back and enjoy a good evening of high school football. This one mm -hmm. to decide the 12 AAA title. Ball is going to be taken by Payne right at the goal line. Finds running room to the right side of the field before he's finally knocked out of bounds at the 25-26 yard line. So Hunters Lane's going to take over first and 10 on the 26 yard line. I'll tell you, Hunters Lane's got a good offense. <clears throat> I like this kid, Brad Bennett, senior tight end, plays great defense too. Langston, Dick, Rager, and of course the superstar of high schools, Randy Payne. Uh, Jernigan, Breedlove, McDonald, Jackson, Luck, and Hancock, Luck, especially potent on that right side along with Hancock, they make things happen. They call them the pigs, and uh, yep. they're over there on the, on the right side. They also know them as the hogs, so they like to run to that side as well. By, backs in the eye formation. Matt Dick is your quarterback. Brian Rager, the fullback, and Randy Payne is the back man in the eye formation. First time, that's Randy Payne, and he breaks three or four tackles. He gets into the defensive secondary before he's finally drugged down by a great play, 86 for Stratford, Brian Ward. Yeah, Brian Ward made a nice play. Randy Payne almost broke it. Let's see the Stratford defensive unit. You see Downing, Williams, Holt, Devins, and Stone. That's pretty formidable front. And Ward, McClanahan, Threat, Hodges, Amos, and Campbell. And in there right now, Lawrence Orlando on defense, too. He's a big kid playing right defensive tackle. A first down for Hunter's Lane right off the bat. Ball on the 35-yard line. Baxter in the eye formation. It's going to be Randy Payne once again running over people as he crosses the 40 up to about the 41-yard line. Tackled made by 34, Ronald Downing, along with help from 55 and 50, Edward Williams. I tell you, Rick, uh, Payne is running with a lot more abandon than when we saw him last time against Overton. 
You're right, Duncan. And one thing that the Stratford needs to watch out for is not to let Randy Payne realize that he can run the football early in the ball game because right. if indeed he can, it could be a long night for Stratford. But we're early and just getting underway. Second down five. This time it's Rager, the first man, and he's going to pick up the first down, the second first down for Hunters Lane in the early going. And right now, offensively, the Hunters Lane Warriors offensive line of Breedlove, McDonald, Jackson, Luck, and Hancock are just blowing out. the Stratford defensive line off the football. Yeah, they are. And the Stratford defensive line is uh, not a weak defensive front. So I'll tell you, Holt's real good. Lamont Stone is uh, an excellent guy on the front. We'll just have to, uh, have to wait and see if uh, Hunters Lane can keep that up. I that time, Rager broke a couple of tackles. Sure did. I mentioned a moment ago that it was a first down, and they're going to measure just to make sure. And it makes you feel pretty at ease when you actually call the first down from up here, Duncan, by a couple of three or four inches. I didn't realize my eyes were that good in the early going. No. <laughs> because they haven't been in the lat later stages of some of these football games. Yeah. A big first down, so it is first down number two for the Hunters Lane Warriors. Just underway, 10-26 to go first quarter. Scoreless football game. Randy Payne trying the middle of that line. He picks up about four more yards as he gets up to about midfield. That time, uh, nice play. William Holt got him on the ankle, or he might have gone a little further. Sure did. And let's talk a little bit about Randy Payne. 6'1", 185-pound junior coming in. He's the second leading rusher in Nashville, 1,151 yards. He's also the state's leading scorer. He has 16 touchdowns, 96 points. Second down, six for the Warriors. Dressed in orange, blue headgear. Matt Dick is your quarterback. Long count. There's Randy Payne once again, and he's back into the linebackers uh, rather quickly. That's Kurt McClanahan coming up number 82 to make the stop. It's going to bring up a third down, and let's call it three from the 47-yard line of Stratford. Boy, that was a strong tackle by Kurt McClanahan. He just really took Randy Payne to the turf. See the Hunters Lane cheerleaders there. They are psyched for this game. Talked to a few of them before we came up here to the broadcast booth, and they are all excited. A young lady by the name of Miss Wood, and I forget her first name, wanted <laughs> us to say hello to Brad Bennett for her because she and Brad have been friends for a long time, and you know how that goes. As a matter of, as a matter of fact, we're going to take a break. There's a timeout on the field, and we're going to let you know that it's 0-0. Zero to zero. We'll come back with the continuing saga of Duncan and the cheerleaders. You're watching the best <laughs> in high school football on Viacom Cablevision Channel 36. Get everything underway down on the field and caught me napping. It's going to be a big third down and three. Pitch deep to Randy Payne. Breaks inside a couple of tackles. He's going to be short of the first down as he gets up to the 45 yard line of Stratford. Pick up of a couple on the play and Duncan brings up an interesting fourth down situation for Jerry Pig. We've seen him go for it in situations like this. It's early. I'm not sure he'll do it here. Not with the type of offense he's facing in Stratford. I think you're right, Duncan. The punting unit coming into the ball game, and you mentioned Brad Bennett just a moment ago, number 48, will come into punt, but the officials are going to measure, it, it appears. And just, just make sure, I mean, from where we're looking at it from the press box, Duncan, it doesn't look like there's any doubt that it's going to be a fourth down, but the officials wanting to make sure and making, making definitely sure that uh, it is a fourth down situation and not a first down. They're going to bring in the chains. Well, I think Jerry Pig wants to get an idea of how far they really have to go for the first down. And there he can see it's about, oh, heavens, I'd say a yard and a half, wouldn't you? At least a good yard and a half. And I think the decision that he's going to make to, uh, well, he hasn't made a decision yet. Bubba, I think Spears, he's going Bubba Spears on the sidelines and Jerry Pig trying to, to decide what he's going to do. And we know Coach Pig always likes to use his timeouts. He may decide to take one here and no, he's, he's going. He's going to go for it. You got to like the guts, it. anyway. Yeah, well, that's not a bad. I think he can move the ball that much, don't you? Fourth down, about a yard. This is football, man. Hunters Lane on the 45-yard line. Stratford's defense trying to keep them from getting the first down. Randy Payne gets the call, and he falls for the first down, but it depends on where the spot is. They said that his forward progress had got to about the 41, and the he official it brings back. it back. They're going to spot the ball. There you see Randy Payne, the junior running back. He's got it. There's no. I don't even see the need to measure this one. You can see right from here. Let's take a look. Watch it on replay here, folks. 
Long count with Dick. I'll tell you, if Dick had tried to keep it himself, he was nailed on a nice blitz by three. But as it is, it looks like me like Randy Payne made it. And he did. By the length of the football, Duncan, yep. so the third first down of the night goes to Hunter's Lane, and that's the type of call that you need to, to be successful on. I love it. I do, too. I, like I love the, it. The fact that Jerry Pig play the game, not going for anything but uh, victory here tonight. The yeah. hometown crowd on his side, anyway. A lot of followers from Stratford here as well. And uh, all the TV channels are here covering this one, folks. I'll tell you that. All of them. Serves them right. They should be here. You bet. Three first downs for Hunter's Lane as they took the opening kickoff. First play from the 26-yard line. They've marched the ball now to the 44-yard line of Stratford. Pretty impressive drive. All of the plays have been on the ground. Randy Payne getting the call all but one time when Brian Rager ran for a first down. First and 10 on the 44. Matt Dick is your quarterback. There's Randy Payne. Spinning and twisting as he picks up maybe a yard. Tackle made by 21 Joseph Campbell coming up from his defensive secondary position. Campbell, I was talking to Bob Leach and Jerry Pig back before the game, and they both said that Campbell would be a great free safety at a major college. And I believe it after watching him play as much as we've seen him play. Got a lot of quickness. He's the leading rusher in the national area, but I think a lot of people are looking at him more from the defensive side than they are from the offensive side of the football. He's got more size for that. Second down, 10. Ball still on the 44-yard line. First pass of the night by Hunter's Lane. Matt Dick throwing out incomplete. Pass intended for 88. Lamar Jones, the Z-back, he's a senior coming into the football game for Hunter's Lane. So Matt Dick, the senior quarterback, 5'10", 170 pounds. There you see him. The man who engineers this Hunter's Lane offense, and he has a couple of good guys in the backfield to, to work that offense with. Brian Rager, 38 to fullback, and 36, Randy Payne. Big, big play for Jerry Pig right here. Third down and 10. Brad Bennett still your tight end. Some shifting in the offensive line, and, and Matt Dick wants to call timeout and think about it just a little bit. Some confusion, it seemed. As yeah. Jerry Pig tried to get the forces back together and ended up, I believe, a man short. And Coach Pig, as you see him on the left, going out to talk to his team. And we're going to take a break tonight on the ball game between Hunters Lane and Stratford. 7.35 to go first quarter. Scoreless first quarter. You're watching the best in high school football on Viacom Cablevision, Channel 36. Wants to go back and, and talk things over a little bit. That he does. Duncan, you think he's going to put it up or keep it on the ground with Randy Payne? Uh, boy, I think he's going to probably keep it on the ground with Randy Payne. There's the pitch to Randy Payne, and Payne's going to throw the football. The pass is long, intended for Brad Bennett, and Bennett makes the catch and a penalty marker on the play down to the 15-yard wow. line. That was just a pure athletic ability play by Brad Bennett. He's a lot taller than the defensive secondary number eight, Greg Hodges, and just came down with the football. Let's take another look. I'll tell you, there's a flag on this play, and it's uh, pass interference one way. You make the call. Payne with a dying quail. And Brad Bennett, who's as good, as much athletic ability as anybody on this Hunters Lane team. You watch him, he goes up, and you watch who you think made the contact. My opinion, my opinion is that uh, <laughs> it probably was against Stratford, although I think that's a tough call. I think they, I don't think there should have been a flag, but uh, you know, it's hard to say. I wasn't right down there. That's a tough call. I when you look at the replay, it looks like Brad Bennett was the one that instigated the contact, but. Yeah. You never, you know, you're not down on the field like the officials are. They say that Stratford is guilty of interference. First and 10 on the 15-yard line for Hunter's Lane. A big play right there. Probably a good call, too. There's the pitch to Rager trying to right side. And he gets down close to the 10-yard line. I think they're going to spot it at the 11, coming good up run. off the bottom of the pile for Stratford, number 55. That's Marcus Stevenson, a sophomore, along with Kurt McClanahan, number 82. Stratford does not have, as you can see, just if you see the roster, Hunters Lane's got almost twice as many names as Stratford. Stratford's got a thin team. They don't have that. They've got a good, good team, but their depth is not what Hunters Lane's is. A lot of the players on Stratford's team going both ways. Right. It's going to be second down six. Pick up a four by Brian Rager, the fullback. It's Rager once again trying the inside. He spins off a couple of tacklers. Gets down to inside the five, down to about the three. Good hard running. Good hard running by Brian yep. Rager. First 
First down, Hunter's Lane on this one. You watch. You want to see how a fullback's supposed to run? This kid's got a good, quick first step, gets to the hole, and he just chugs. You see one broken tackle there, another one there, and he spins out off of a good hit on Joe Campbell's part. Finally, Hodges brings him down along with Brian Amos from his cornerback spot. First Ball. and goal, Hunter's Lane. Ball spotted on the three-yard line. First and goal, Hunter's Lane on the three. Matt Dick, your quarterback, Brian Rager, Randy Payne in the split formation in the backfield. That's Rager, he gets the call. Touchdown, Hunter's Lane, and they lead six to nothing. 6.02 to go first quarter, and the excitement of the Hunter's Lane fans is evident here tonight, as you can see the jubilance in there on their sideline. Six to nothing, Hunter's Lane, and they lead this 12 AAA showdown early. Coach's son, Danny Pig, to try and make it 7 nothing. The two key plays on the drive, the fourth down call by Jerry Pig. We've got to give him credit for that. Took guts to do that. And then the uh, catch by Brad Bennett. Pass interference was called to no avail because it didn't matter. He caught the ball. Big pass play on Randy Payne's option. Hunter's Lane in control early. Daniel Pig on to try to make it 7 to nothing, and he does. So Hunter's Lane takes the early lead. 6.02 to go first quarter. Hunter's Lane leading a seven to nothing, and now we get a chance to see the explosive offense of Stratford taking the field for the first time tonight. Let's look at the touchdown replay here. Again, Rager, just a straight off tackle play, and he booms through and dives into the end zone. He smelled Paydirt all the way. Seven nothing. Talk about those hogs up front. Oh, they did a great nothing. job for yeah. uh, Jerry Pig and his coaching staff blowing off the football. We could have been for a holes. dandy here, couldn't we? Well, we have made a comment during the, the break. Uh, everybody expects it to be a very high-scoring football game, myself included. And we got to thinking that maybe the defenses were going to rise to the occasion. And it still may happen that way. But we've got an awful lot of explosive talent on this football field that probably, if they get it cranked up, we could see 40, 50 points combined. We are seeing the biggest crowd we've seen all year, too. You can see it right there. I mean, this is the biggest crowd we have seen at a high school football game since we've been doing these games. And it's about time to see a, a place where there is some support yep. for their high school team. Hunters Lane getting ready to kick off there. You see the deep backs, Joseph Campbell, one of the guys back there doing the receiving duties. And we're about ready to get this thing underway. Seven to nothing. Hunters Lane shutting out Stratford. Good kick coming down to Joseph Campbell on the 10-yard line. Makes a couple of stutter step moves, crossing the 30-yard line to the 33. And there you see, Duncan, the athletic ability and the quickness of number 21, Joseph Campbell, the Metro's leading rusher, 1,161 yards. And here's the offense of Stratford. Uh, in my opinion, probably the most explosive offense in town. McClanagan, Hodges, Fleming, Downing, and Campbell at the skill positions. Joining them, Brian Ward, and uh, he's a wide receiver. William Street. Burns, Holt, and King, believe me, they can open the holes. Now we get a chance to look at the explosive offense of the Spartans. This is the fullback downing, falling forward for three yards. Tackled by, see if we can get it off the bottom of the, of the pile there, number 20, Tim Scott. And Tim Scott there, uh, you see on the defense of Hunter's Lane, along with Bennett McGar and the others, and Grisham, Eakes, Prince, Payne, Forehand, and Hancock in the backfield. You talk about the Stratford backfield. Ronald Downing, the fullback, 34, is the third leading rusher in the metro area. 884 in his yardage total. Joseph Campbell, the leading rusher, 1161. So they've accounted for 2,000 yards rushing. And there's Joseph Campbell. He's going to put it up. We've seen the, half, the tailback throw the ball for Hunter's Lane, and it's picked off. That is Joel Hancock, 26, the defensive secondary for Hunter's Lane. And, and Duncan, all of yep. a sudden we see some razzle-dazzle. It was effective for Hunter's Lane. This time Joseph Campbell has his halfback pass intercepted. Well, Hancock was all over. Hodge is the intended receiver. He just made an excellent defensive play, went up for the ball, and came down with it. And uh, Campbell didn't quite get as much on the ball as he wanted to, as you'll see right here. A good play call, though, really. I mean, this should work. You see Downing out ready to block, and Campbell... Throws the ball, looked like it slipped off his hand a little bit. Hodges stumbles, and Hancock right there in position to make the play. Nice defensive play there coming in to make the tackle on him. I didn't catch the number, but it was a good play. First and 10, Hunters Lane, ball 32-yard line. It's going to be Randy Payne. Tackle. Defensive end, Ronald Downing, a very quick defense. <laughs> by 34, Ronald Downing, tailback meeting fullback. 
fullback slash defensive end. Ronald Downing, a very <laughs> quick defensive end, and that time Randy Payne didn't get much. It's going to be first, second down. Looks like possibly 10, depending on where they spot the football ball, just shy of the 30 yard line. I'm going to call it eight. They say that he got two, so it's going to be second down and eight, ball just shy of the 30 yard line. Scoring drive, 13 plays, 79 yards for Hunters Lane. And they're on top with a nice three yard run by Brian Rager. You know, it's interesting when you, you see teams that get down close to the end zone and they have a player who has helped get them down there. Brian Rager carrying the ball down to the three yard line. A lot of times you see somebody else come in and get the scoring, uh, get the touchdown. That time Rager got the ball down there and Jerry Pig says, you got it there, we're gonna let you put it in. Gave him that opportunity. Second down and eight, 3.56 to go. First quarter, Hunters Lane leading seven to nothing. If you just joined us, wide receiver at the bottom of your screen, it's Jernigan. Pass intended for Bennett is complete. Nice catch. Falling out of bounds about the 35 yard line. A good catch by Bennett. And once again, we just see his overall athletic ability. Oh, yeah, he is just a marvelous athlete. Uh, uh, a real, real good punter. Excellent defensive ball player, very quick, and also a premier receiver, as you'll see right here on the replay. Nice play action fake by Dick. They're clearing out the zone right there so Bennett can get free, and he makes a nice leaping catch and manages to keep his feet inbounds, and he was covered by McClanahan like a glove. 33 for Hunter's Lane, ball on the 35-yard line. <clears throat> Hand off to Randy Payne, getting nowhere. Good penetration by the front of the Stratford defense. You got Brian Ward, Lamont Stone over there involved in the tackle, along with Kurt McClanahan from the mm -hmm. defensive uh, linebacker position. Also making a nice play, Glenn King. He got in there and helped put the beef to the guy. And uh, Brian Threat getting up pretty slowly for Stratford, and they can ill afford to use him to lose him. He's a real leader on the team, a senior linebacker and offensive guard. The old adage, where's the beef? There you found it, right in the middle <laughs> of that Stratford defensive line. Brad Bennett on to do the punting for Hunter's Lane. Deep, lone man back there is Joseph Campbell. There you see Bennett. Fourth and five. Setting up the return. They didn't rush the kicker very much, but good kick by Bennett. Good roll. Boy. Took a Hunter's Lane bounce, so mm -hmm. the ball's going to bound down about the 27-yard line. Good punt by Brad Bennett. The second time we see the Stratford offense, they'll begin from their 27-yard line, first and 10. Nice punt by Bennett. And uh, if, if Campbell had been able to get under that and catch it, they had a nice wall set up for him. It's a decision but, that uh, you know is an interesting one to, to make. Do you go after the punt, or do you go back and try to set up a run back? And when you've got players like Campbell, set up the run back. <laughs> I'm like Coach Leach. you got to do a, you try to get the ball down the field. First and 10 for Stratford. Corey Fleming is your quarterback. Hodges is your wing back in the backfield. The deep man is Joseph Campbell. He's got the football trying to get outside. Struggles up close to the 30 yard line. Tackle made on the play by 56 from Stratford. That is Wesley Murray, the tackle. Good blocking out in front. There you see the numbers for Campbell last week, rushing for 172 yards, scoring three touchdowns and a big, big win for Stratford. Joseph Campbell uh, just can do it all. There's no other way to put it. Second down and six for Stratford. There you see the junior quarterback, Corey Fleming, the left-handed thrower. Doesn't put the ball up very often, but he's very accurate when he does. There's Ronald Downey getting into the secondary, and what a runner he is. Picks up the first down ball on the 43-yard line. Tackle made in the secondary by 16, Jamie Forehand. Duncan, you remember in our opening game uh -huh. of the year against White's Creek, you ran for 197 yards, depending on whose newspaper you read. Some of them <laughs> had him for over 200. There's Downing, and you see Campbell with a nice block on Bennett, the defensive end. That's what sprung Downing, and he makes the most of it. Finally caught by Forehand. Boy, what a block by Campbell on Bennett, huh? Good job getting uh, Brad Bennett, the defensive end, out of the picture. 34, Ronald Downing. First and 10. There you see the pitch to Campbell, carrying the ball rather loosely, and he's going to be brought down from behind. Good play by Tim Scott, 20, once again. And I think you're going to going to see a holding penalty on Stratford. I'm not sure. That's just a preliminary observation by me. Let's watch the replay. You might be able to see the hold. 
You see Hodges right there slips. That kind of messes the play up because he was supposed to be out there making interference. You see Campbell now going on the inside. Right there you see just a little bit. You see the hold just in front of Campbell there. I think they're going to march it off against Stratford. We'll see. He also saw the athletic ability of the quarterback, Corey Fleming. I mean, he was hit right as he released the ball to Campbell. Campbell had to bring it in, and it is going to be against Stratford. So they're going to back it up just a little bit. We're going to go down to the field and get Randy Heatner's official work. Got a little use of the hands on the offense. Still got first down now. All right, illegal use of the hands. Going to bring up first down and about 15 yards. Ball is now on the 37 yard, 38 yard line. At a minute two left to go in our first quarter. Seven to nothing. Hunters Lane on top of Stratford. This Big 12 AAA battle. The district championship on the line. Hodges moves to the wing back position. There's the pitch to Joseph Campbell, who uh -oh. in the front position this uh -oh. time. Getting down the right sidelines, and he picks up the first down. Uh -huh. Getting to the marker and going out of bounds. That time, Duncan, they reversed the backs in the backfield. Normally, Downing lines up on the right side, and Campbell is on the left. They reversed him. Campbell, the first man out. Let's take Off a look. The races. You see Campbell out there. Look at that first step he has. I mean, he is out in front of the pursuit right away. They just can't catch up to him as he goes around the end. I mean, Rager, not a bad play uh, from his defensive linebacker spot, but he just can't catch up to him. Campbell is so quick. First down, Stratford. Boy, they rebound from that penalty fast. <laughs> sure did. Stratford coming into the ballgame, or Campbell coming into the ballgame, as we mentioned, 1,161 yards. He scored 14 touchdowns for Stratford, 84 points on the year. First and 10 for the Spartans. Ball on the 46-yard line now of Hunter's Lane. Buck, 40 seconds left in the first quarter. Hodges, you see him moving to the top of your screen. There's Downing. Brad Bennett, forehand, all of the front of the Hunters Lane defense in there on the stop. Yeah, Downing didn't get much then, but that keeps him honest. I'll tell you, give some credit there to Wesley Murray, too, who came in and helped with the stop. It's okay. When they run that dive play, and then the next time they play action fake to Downing, it freezes people. Talk about those two players, Campbell and Downing. Jerry Pig said that he didn't have any reason to have anybody tell him how good they were. He was their coach when they were sophomores. That's right. Probably the best two backs of any school they're going to face this year. Downing and Campbell. Second down nine. It'll be the last play of the first quarter, and there's Downing inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. First and 10 for Stratford. That is going to be the last play of the first half. Avis Eeks, 42, came up from his defensive position to make the stop. And we're going to take a break tonight with the first quarter coming to an end with the score. Hunters Lane 7, Stratford on the move here at the end of the first quarter. We're going to take a break, and you're watching the best in high school football on Viacom Cablevision Channel 36. Early 7 to nothing lead on a three-yard plunge by Brian Rager, the fullback. Stratford is now mounting a pretty good-looking drive, Duck, and they're now down to the 27-yard line. First and 10 as we begin the second quarter. Stratford moving the ball very effectively now, mixing their offense up. The guy we haven't seen yet, Hodges. They run a nice inside reverse with him sometimes. That time Downing was the, the man that they weren't keying on. They're continuing to key on Campbell and Downing uh, available to run the football. There you see Hodges moving into the bottom of your screen. There's Downing. He's going to try to get it up. I think he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Gerald McGar, 63 in there on the stop. Tim Scott, 20, coming up off the bottom of that pile along with number 60, Scott McDonald. 11.44 and counting in the first or second quarter. There you see the defensive huddle of Hunters Lane and some of the crowd that are on hand tonight. Second down nine. Ball on the 26 yard line. Fleming pitches deep to Campbell after faking it to Downing and Campbell cuts back showing you his athletic ability as he gets down close to the 20 yard line. Once again, Scott McDonald's 60. Coming up off the bottom of the pile. Good running by Joseph Campbell. The fake to Downing throws the linebackers, getting the pitch back to Campbell, and he cut back inside for a pickup of about four. So he made a lot of that on his own. He really didn't have much interference and cut back beautifully, didn't he? Sure did. Going to bring up a third down and about five now. Maybe a little less, but let's call it four. <clears throat> and as you did it, the scoreboard flashed the number four. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I'm telling you, you're awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the pants. The color that is. Those red pants. 
Third down and four. Fleming pitches deep to Campbell. Campbell is smothered and a penalty marker down on the play, so we'll have to see what happens on this play. Once again, number 60, Scott McDonald involved there. 67, Toby Grisham. Let's look at it again. I think you're going to have another hold on this. You can see it right there on Brad Bennett. Campbell goes inside, but Bennett was just held right out of the play, so I think they're going to well, it'll be interesting to see whether they take the penalty or whether they, they move them, you know, they leave it there and let them have another shot at it. We'll see. There you see Scott McDonald, the guy who has been involved in the last three defensive plays for Hunter's Lane. One of the smaller offensive linemen in Nashville. 5'9", 155 pound senior. He's going with guys that are 200, 245, and 285. Illegal use of the hands. Offense, third down. This actually, by taking the penalty, might be a break for Stratford. Gives him another, another hammer at it. Uh, maybe we'll see Corey Fleming's talented left arm. Going to bring up third down and 15 now. Ball is now back on the 32-yard line. Hodges in motion there. You see the handoff to Randy, or excuse me, to Ronald Downing, and he's no touched. He goes down to the three-yard line, and nobody touched him, Duncan, until no. he got inside the 10. Oh, what a call. Give credit to the right side of that Stratford offensive line there, man. They just opened the hole. Whoa, what a call. A big defensive breakdown by the defense of, of Hunter's Lane. Let's take another look at it. You see right there, Downing, well, you can't really see it, uh, but he came whipping through that hole. That was pretty much a trap play, it looked like to me, you know, where they really faked out the linemen. See Fleming, wasn't that Fleming? Was it Hodges. Was that Hodges down there? Back down there. First and goal. But First boy, and he goal. just went through unscathed. They were looking for the pitch. Sure were. Watching uh, for Campbell to get the football, or as we talked about, that talented left arm of Corey Fleming. Downing a little shaken up on that play. We hope he's okay. Campbell downing out in front, Hodges out in front, and good defensive pursuit. The ball is loose, and Hunter's Lane has come up with a big break. They've oh, recovered the what fumble a play. inside the 10-yard line, so it's going to be first and 10, Hunter's Lane, the crowd. as a result of that fumble. What a play. Huh. Second costly turnover for Stratford as they've been rolling forehand with the recovery on that one. Let's watch it. Looks like Campbell's just a little careless with the ball, and they strip him. Had the, had the blockers out in front, downing and Hodges. Look at this play from the defense. There's Bennett. And he's the one that stripped the ball right there. Just literally pounded out. Jamie Forehand on the recovery. Big break for the Warriors of Hunter's Lane. We'll see if they can capitalize. A lot of orange. First and 10 for Hunter's Lane. Ball right at the 10-yard line. Call it the 9. 9.20 to go first, first half. 7 to nothing. Hunter's Lane on top. Randy Payne tries the right side, and just as we talk about the strength of the Hunters Lane defense, Stratford's defense comes into play now. William Holt, 64, Brian three, 65 involved in the tackle. Boy, well, that was a nice piece of defense and a two and a half yard loss, three yard loss. This is one of those kind of situations, though, Duncan. Stratford doesn't put the ball in the end zone. They were dominating the the ball game there for just a moment on the offensive side. If they can hold Stratford, I mean, hold Hunters Lane, make them punt the football, they can still come out of this oh, situation yeah. in pretty good field position. Second down, 13. Penalty marker down on the play, and you saw Randy Payne trying to get out of the end zone. I think you might see a face mask on this one. The way Randy went down to the ground, I think you're going to see face mask. Well, let's take a look and see if we can pick it up on the replay from our end zone camera. See Payne coming around. Now they're going to stop him. But uh, right there, right there, you saw the face mask play. Saw his head turn around quickly. And that's dangerous. That, that's uh, very, very dangerous. You can hurt somebody that way. Once again, we see another good job by the officials. Yes, right on it. Taking matters into their own hands and calling the penalty. So it's going to be... Very close to a first. It's going to be a first down. Yeah. First down and 10 yards to go for Hunter's Lane. And the get the word from Randy Heavner. The word coming up right now. Okay, I've got face mask over here. Now, that's three costly errors early in the game for the Spartans. Yeah, it is. Okay. And you got the penalties. You got the turnover. Yeah. Boy. What a way to begin a football game when, when the district title is on the line. You don't want to let a team like Hunter's Lane get the momentum or get the, 
the feeling that they can win the football game. They've yeah. got the home crowd. They've got a lot of fans here cheering them on. They beat McGavick here three weeks ago in a big ball game that at that time was was a battle of, of two teams that could have easily you know, knocked each other off. McGavick could have easily won that ball game. Hunters Lane came away victorious. Then last week they had some trouble with Hendersonville, only winning seven to six, and they won that ball game on a late touchdown. Mm -hmm. A couple of minutes left to go. So they have been tested in the last couple of weeks, and so far they haven't been. They're seven and zero. First and ten, ball 17 yard line. Matt Dix to your quarterback, Brian Rager, the fullback. In the tailback position, that's Randy Payne. There's Rand uh, Brian Rager carrying the football. He's into the defensive secondary before he's finally knocked down by 82, Kurt McClanahan. First, first down. Hit him. This kid runs hard. Not real fast, but boy, he gets through the hole with a lot of power. Watch him right here. Makes a nice up cut that time. Turns away from the off tackle play and goes up the middle and makes a nice first down for Hunter's Lane. They're moving it again. Eight talk, minutes to go. We talk about the fullback from Stratford. This one's not bad. Brian Rager, number no. 38. First and 10, Hunter's Lane. Rager once again, and he's continuing to barrel his way for yardage across the 40-yard line. Good running, good offensive line play as we continue to talk about it by Hunter's Lane. Hancock made a great block on that play. Richard Hancock, that's easy for him. He's 6'3", 290 pounds. If I'm going to run the football, he's the guy I want to be behind, I'm going to tell you. Second down four, ball on the 31. I said 41 a moment ago. It's the 31-yard line. Rager once again. Right now, he's being the workhorse in the backfield for Hunter's Lane. Looks like a first down. Yeah. Three in there to help make the stop, 65. Let's, let's watch him run. This kid is a hoss. He's also getting some nice blocking. See, he tucks that ball in there and just knifes his way through, breaks a tackle there. And you see, well, you want to talk about, about a battle? 66 and 72 there, that's Hancock and Stone. Stone, 240 pounds. Not many people are going to overmatch him in physical size, but <laughs> Hancock's got 45 pounds on him. There you Rager. see the numbers on Brian Rager. Eight rushes, 43 yards. First and 10, ball now on the 36-yard line. Hunters Lane in Stratford, 12 AAA district title on the line. Hunters Lane leading 7-0. Rager once again, and it seems every time, Duncan, we call Rager's name. They're working him hard. He's up to the 39. Well, this is this kind of reminds me of when White's Creek played Stratford, and uh, Stratford's outside game with uh, Campbell was covered completely, and Rager on the inside was just, uh, I mean, not Rager, but Downing was running wild. Well, Rager's doing the same thing in this game because they are covering Payne pretty well so far. Or it could be a, a, a situation that Jerry Pig, the coach of Hunters Lane, is trying to set up that outside run yeah, by yeah. making him think that Rager's going to get the football and then pitching it out to Payne. Second down, eight yards. Ball just shy of the 40 on the 38. There's Rager once again. He jumps over a couple of would-be tacklers and gets out to the 44. A little further than that even, I think. Or, I mean, not, not as far. About 43. 43. So big, big play right here for the Stratford defense. Uh, 5.50 to go in the first quarter, and Hunter's Lane is moving the ball on him very effectively. I must admit, so far, I'm very surprised. Although I must say that Stratford has been, you know, victimized by their own mistakes. Stratford and Mallet, a pretty good drive. Had the ball first and goal on the three-yard line if you've just joined us. Joseph Campbell tries to run to the left side, had blockers out in front of him, and fumbled the football. Hunter's Lane recovered, took the ball on the three-yard line, and now they're up to the 43-yard line. But they have a third down and three, 5.49 to go. There's a timeout while we talk about what's going on there, down there on the field offensively and defensively. We talk a little bit, Duncan, about the, the two coaching philosophies of Bob Leach and of Jerry right. Pig. Jerry Pig is the guy who believes that if they give you six timeouts in the rules, that's what they're there for, and I'm going to use every one of them. And he will definitely do that. I remember very vividly the game that we did, Hunters Lane and Overton had a couple of minutes left to go, and you went down to the field to talk with both well, talk with Jerry Pig after the game was over. And I believe Coach Pig used three or four timeouts during that time. And yeah, I spent two minutes talking to myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Showed you how much I knew right quick, didn't I? Well, I bet you did all right. 
but you you delivered some good philosophy. Sure. There's a, a an old college chum of mine, Bubba Spears, on the right. Uh, as a matter of fact, Bubba Spears was an all NIL baseball player in 1974 at Stratford High School, huh. now coaching against the Spartans here at Hunter's Lane. Third down and three, Hunter's Lane. They're going to put the ball in the air. The pass across the middle to Bennett is incomplete. Good defensive play broken up in the defensive secondary by 43, Brian Amos, a 145-pound junior. Good luck that time by the Hunter's Lane offense trying to get the quick hit across the middle. That This pass, I think, should have been completed. Uh, Amos made a nice play, but really this was a catchable ball. Dick with a nice play-action fake and throws a nice ball right there. Uh, it wasn't Amos so much, although he made a nice play, as it just slipped off Brad Bennett's hands, and those things happen, as you know, being a Georgia Bulldog fan, don't you? Oh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I do. Except uh, the one that we dropped was a little closer to the goal line. Yeah. 5.44 to go second quarter. Brad Bennett on to do the punting. Deep is Joseph Campbell, number 21. This time they go after the punt, and it's Short. going straight up in the air. And takes a very Ooh. bad bounce. Hunter's Lane would be wise to down it, and they do on the 49-yard line. I think that's going to be about a five-yard punt. Ooh. Not good for the old average. No, that was a tough one. Not good for the uh, the defensive unit of your ball club either. No, but good for Stratford. They got 5.33 to go, and uh, I think uh, they have probably been lectured big time by Coach Bob Leach about their fundamentals and not losing sight of the fact that you can't hold people on your blocks. Do you lecture that loudly, though? Uh, sometimes, <laughs> I'll tell you, sometimes. First and 10 for Stratford Ball just inside the 50-yard line, 49 of Hunter's Lane. Corey Fleming, the quarterback, he's going to put it up. First pass of the night intended for Hodges is incomplete. Pretty good coverage that time by Hunter's Lane. I'll tell you what, Corey Fleming, and that may sound crazy, he's only a junior in high school, but to me, he threw that ball away. It, uh, the Hodges was blanketed by the Hunter's Lane defense, and Corey threw that at his feet. I agree with you. We've Jamie Forehand, number, number 16. <laughs> We've seen him uh, for a couple of years now, and yeah. he does have the maturity to know he's better off by putting it away like that. Yep. Well, he saved a couple of yard loss and a potential turnover. And right now, Stratford doesn't need another turnover. They no. had one deep in their own territory a few moments ago, or deep in Hunter's Lane territory on the three yard line. Second down 10. There you see Hodges moving into the slot. It's Ronald Downing getting the ball, and he's into the secondary once again. Sheds a tackler, an arm tackle. You can't bring this guy down no. with one of those. Catching him from behind, the other fullback slash defensive end, Brian Rager. <laughs> what, a, what a run by Downing. He breaks a couple of tackles right near the line of scrimmage. You cannot tackle this kid high unless you're, you know, gang tackling him. Watch this right here. You see right there, Downing just slips through the hole, slips a tackle there, slips another tackler there, just rolls off his shoulders, and McClanahan's out there trying to figure out who to block. Finally just blocks the nearest available Hunter's Lane player, and <laughs> just Downing block runs down the field. Block an orange shirt. <laughs> Ronald Downing, 34. First and 10 ball on the 20, 19 yard line. He's downing again, breaking a couple of tacklers, and he gets into the secondary, and he's still running. Tim Prince finally involved yeah. with 56 yeah. to make the stop. 56, Wesley Murray and Tim <laughs> Prince, number 18. When you talk about the fullback, Ronald Downing, let's watch him on the replay. He is about 5'10", weighs 200 pounds. Look at Tim this. Prince, who is the defensive back uh, that comes up in the play, 5'9", 160. We know who's going to win this one. I mean, it's like, you know, let's walk through a bunch of mattresses or something. <laughs> <laughs> First and goal, Stratford on the eight-yard line. There's Ronald Downing, and this time he doesn't get anywhere, but it takes three of them. <laughs> Hunter's Lane defensive players I'm speaking of to bring yeah. him down. 18 Prince, 20 Scott, 38 Rager, all in over there. They finally outweigh him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, this, this Stratford offense is so explosive. I mean, it is just so explosive. It's one of these kind of offenses, too, that you're always scared about because you know it's going to break open at yeah. some point, but you really just don't know when. Second down five, pick up a three, 349 to go first half. Stratford trying to get the ball in the end zone and make it a little bit closer. Right now, Hunter's Lane on top, 7 nothing. There's Campbell inside the five, bounding his way down to about the three before he stopped by forehand. There you see Payne getting up off the bottom of the pile. And right now, Duncan, it's the linebackers and defensive secondary of Hunter's Lane that are making the stops. And when that happens, you know you're picking up some pretty good yardage. Well, we got a timeout on the field. Coach Bob Leach is going to come out and talk to his team. And uh, we're going to take a break here, Rick. We're going to take a break and let you know with 321 left to go in the second quarter, 
Hunters Lane is leading Stratford 7 to nothing. Stratford knocking on the door. You're watching the best in high school football on Viacom Cablevision Channel 36. Have to go in our Hunters Lane on top and and Stratford is knocking on the door. First, third down conversion. Stratford one for one. Hunters Lane one for four. So when you look at how effective these two teams have been tonight on that third and crucial third down situation, Stratford has been a little more successful. This is a third down and one. That one yard that they need will get them into the end zone and make this game a one-point game. Corey Fleming's going to try it, and he does. He gets it into the end zone. So it's now seven to six. Corey Fleming has put Stratford two and then one. Uh, on a quarterback sneak around the right side. Yeah, that's uh, basically not risking a turnover and getting it into the end zone. That was a good play. You know, when you get down that, that birdie? That's Jared Birdie? No, you didn't hear a birdie. I'm trying to tighten up the microphone on this thing. It's getting down around my chin. Seven to six now. You see Lamont Stone coming on to attempt the extra point, and it is good. Seven to seven, we're all tied up. Hunters Lane and Stratford, and you talk about a game that we felt like was gonna be oh, fairly even, at least early. Can't get much evener than that. You can, I'll tell you, watching Lamont Stone kick that extra point makes me think back to that White's Creek game, and if he'd been healthy to kick and hadn't hurt his ankle, Stratford would be undefeated right now with Hunters Lane late in the game when they had the ball third, and goal to go from the two, and then fourth and goal from the two, and they couldn't kick the field goal, but I took him out of it. You know, my grammar teacher is rolling over in her grave right now. I'm not sure that there's such a word as evener. Let's make it a little more even. How's that? Okay. Okay. Did uh, I say evener? No, I did. That's why I wanted oh, to make you sure did? that I corrected. Oh. I mean, I, I, would, I wouldn't sleep at all I gonna tonight. Say, I, was gonna, I couldn't sleep at all tonight. I'm married to I an said. English professor. Evener. I don't think I could say that. No, I'm glad it was me instead of you. <laughs> I, I don't claim to know this stuff. Yeah. If I did say it, I'm out of the house. <laughs> I mean, if she lets you stay there, don't come over ever again. Richard. I was going to say, if she stay, lets you stay there after you pick the, the other team other than the St. Louis Cardinals, she'll let oh. you stay through anything. Yes, true. Lamont Stone, 66, there you see him. We're doing it again. He <laughs> <laughs> may be sleeping in the yard. Stone getting into the football. Going to go out of bounds, and they'll back it up five yards, probably, and kick it once again. For those of you that don't know what Duncan and I are talking about, you, you need to listen to this great radio show <laughs> yeah. where you saw that Duncan picked the, uh, what team was that? The Giants, I believe, to, uh, I to defeat the St. Louis Cardinals. I and did. the Cardinals came back to win four games to three, World Series time. I have venom for the Cardinals. But tonight, we've got a <laughs> heck of a football game. Seven to seven. <laughs> Boy. I'm actually kidding. I don't have venom for them. Just don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> Just not one of your favorite no, teams. No, not really. But hey. 7-7, seven, seven, Hunters Lane and Stratford here tonight. Lamont Stone, and, and Duncan, you make a good point. When you try to when you try to get uh, talking about the 7-6 to six ball game between Whites Creek and, right. and Stratford at the early going, they had the ball for, fourth and goal on the two and were unable to even try to kick a field goal because Lamont Stone was injured, had, the, had to go for two on the extra point and then had no opportunity to go for a field goal that would have won the ball game. Ooh, nice kick. Stone gets into this one. Coming down to Payne on the 10-yard line. Finds some running room to the left. Cuts it back up into the middle for he's, where he's brought down on the 34-yard line. Lawrence Orlando, 78, coming up to make the tackle along with Greg Denny, number 99. That's who it was. I misread the number. I just looked across and saw Lawrence standing on the sidelines and said, whoa, Duncan, you made a mistake there. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or the guy's got long arms. Yep. Howdy, Lawrence. Sorry about that. It's okay. 3.08 to go in the <laughs> second quarter. First and 10, Hunters Lane ball on the 34-yard line. Matt Dick, your quarterback, loans back in the backfield. Randy Payne, Rager in a slot position. It's like a passing formation. Two receivers wide to the top of your screen, but they keep it on the ground. Randy Payne picks up a couple of three yards across the 35 and the 36. Lamont Stone, 66, coming up from his defensive tackle position to make the stop. Let's look at the scoring drive for Stratford. You're talking about potency in the offense, an average of 10 yards of play. As you see, two minutes and 14 seconds. Fleming, the one-yard run. We are even here at Hunter's Lane with 2.33 to go in the half, 7-7. What a game. If you just joined us, Hunter's Lane scoring in the first quarter a three-yard touchdown run by the fullback Brian Rager. Stratford is just answered by a one-yard run by Stratford's quarterback, Corey Fleming. We're all tied at 7-7. There's the pitch to Randy Payne trying to get it out quick, and that is read beautifully by the Stratford defense. Coming up, 43, Brian Amos, Brian Ward, 86. 
Joseph Campbell, 21. Duncan, you don't have enough fingers to point out all the players involved in that one. Let's watch this. You want to talk about quick diagnosis on part of the defense. You see Dick with a long count, and right there, just a quick pitch, lateral, if you will, to Randy Payne, and all of a sudden he is uh, in for a neighborhood party with the old <laughs> white jerseys. Howdy, Randy. Trying to get him outside quickly, and yeah. didn't work that time. Third down and eight for Hunter's Lane ball, 35-yard line. Dick back to pass under a lot of pressure, Ooh. and he's sacked by Dwight Stone, or Lamont Stone, 66. Great play. Good play by Stone coming up, forcing him out of the pocket. Brought him down, loss of, loss of three on the play. Brings up fourth down 12. Let's watch it again. You see Dick right here going back looking for a receiver, and he's getting a lot of pressure from the periphery. He's got to avoid that, and he does, but you see Lamont Stone reacting and taking him down. And now, with 1.22 to go, Stratford will have a chance to at least get in field, po field goal position. There's a timeout on the field, and they're going to talk things over. We're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. A minute 22 left in the second quarter. Hunters Lane, Stratford, all tied up in this 12 AAA district battle. You're watching the best. Twice the thrills. Joseph Campbell deep for Stratford. A five-yard net punt just a moment ago by Brad Bennett. This time, it's a little bit farther. A good punt. Ball taken on the 34 by Campbell. And he'll lose three or four tackles before he's finally ridden down by Tim Prince, number 18, and number 60, Scott McDonald. What a run. I mean, if you consider there's nobody there to block him, block the Hunter's Lane pursuit, Campbell made a nice, nice play on that one. I'll tell you, I just can't believe what a job Jerry Pig has done in one and a half years here at Hunter's Lane. I mean, the support in the school. This school's only a year and a half old, and this place is absolutely packed. Everybody's wearing Hunter's Lane booster gear, and they've got a good football team. Man, it's just a happening thing. Sure is. It's good to see uh, some good support oh. for a high school program in Hunter's Lane and Stratford. Both of these schools well represented tonight. First and 10 for Stratford. Ronald Downing getting the call. Uh, there's Scott McDonald, 60, number 42. Avis Eeks coming up in there, 67. Grisham, whole host of Warriors for Hunters Lane. Coming up at halftime, we have got the Stratford High School Band and the Hunters Lane High School Band, two fine bands. Is it your night or my night? We're flipping it, baby, because we've been splitting it. Here you go, call it. Tails. Tails it is, you do it. Now, wait a minute, that means I got the night off. <laughs> Second down, nine. Now we got to flip it again to decide who's right. Joseph Campbell is trying uh, the left side. He cuts back to the right. A beautiful run, and then it shows you the athletic ability of Joseph Campbell. He gets the ball down to the 30-yard line. A second down and nine-yard run that develops into about a 25-yard gainer. And Stratford calls timeout. They're on the 30-yard line. Uh, got a shot at a field goal. If they get one more play down the field and call another timeout, they certainly have enough timeouts left. Jerry Pig running back on the field to talk to his defense. Boy, that was a pretty run. You're right by Joe Campbell. Pretty run by Joseph Campbell. And you look at the options that Stratford has right now. Stratford has more than just one option. They've got a chance to put the ball in the air with Corey Fleming. They've got oh, yeah. some talented receivers, especially in Hodges. They also have Brian Ward out there, Kurt McClanahan. Let's take a look at the run. But they've also got a couple of great running backs that they can give it to. Number 21 being one of them. Look at him. He's a Nashville Metro leading rusher. Boy, and he continued to rack up some yardage there. He came into the night 1,161, and we don't have a, a complete total of what he's done so far in the first half, but I'm sure he's... I know that uh, by carrying the ball so far this evening, he's, he's done a pretty good job. And if you'd like to give us a word of what you think about our broadcast, Viacom Cablevision, just write us. Post Office Box 5570, Nashville, Tennessee, 37208. You do that so well. Well, it's the first time I've ever done it. Great You job. usually do that, and you were, I don't know what you were doing. You were taking a break, you know. I was talking to Brother Timothy, our fine sitting, statistician. Sitting, sitting down on the job. First and ten. Uh -oh. Ball is loose, and Hunter's Lane, it looks like, has come up with the yep. football. Yep. Seven seconds left in the second big turnover of the night. Stratford has laid the ball on the ground, and Hunter's Lane, both times, has come away with the ball. Let's watch it on the replay here. You see Fleming going back. And it's one of those plays where you fake dropping back and wrap it around and hand it off to the tailback. And Fleming just didn't get the handoff into Campbell's stomach. He got it on his hip. Number 20, Tim Scott. There you see him recovering the fumble. Forehand got the first one. Scott got the second one with about seven seconds. And they have wound it on down. That's going to be the end of the first half tonight. We've not accomplished anything. We've played 
A first half of football, and we're all knotted up seven and seven. Stratford and Hunters Lane, District 12 AAA Championship on the line. You're watching the best in high school football on Viacom Cablevision Channel 36. And, of course, Viacom Cablevision Channel 36, more of what you're looking for. Happy to have you here at halftime at Hunters Lane High School with the score Stratford 7, Hunters 7. Let's go down to the field right now and enjoy the Stratford High School Marching Band under the direction of Mr. Carlton Scott. The second half itself is one of those that could be uh, just <laughs> as exciting. Hunters of, Lane cheerleaders. A lot of number one friends. Friends of Duncan Stewart's down there saying uh, he's number one, but Hunters That's Lane right. definitely number one. Seven to seven <laughs> as we begin our second half. And Duncan, doggone, it's good to see some support oh, for man. high school football. We talk wow. about the, the lack of turnout sometimes, but a big turnout tonight. Halftime stats. You see uh, Hunters Lane ahead in the first downs, but Stratford ahead in total yards. Interestingly enough, Stratford has yet to get a passing yard, and they've got a kid who can really throw, so that could tell. The penalties are the killer for Stratford. 55 yards, five penalties, three turnovers, and uh, it could be 21 to seven. It really could be. Very easily. You uh, talk about you talk about the big play down on the <coughs> three-yard right. line where uh, Stratford fumbled the football and then fumbled it again. Yep. Going in uh, late in the first quarter or first half. Stratford's going to get the ball back. Uh, it really has been a battle of the fullbacks. Rager with uh, 50 yards, averaging five yards a carry. Downing averaging nine points, 9.7 yards. You see Downing there, 97 yards. Rager 50. Now the two that we expected to battle, Campbell and Payne. Payne started off with a 15-yard carry, and uh, it, his totals have been diminishing ever since. Stratford has kind of figured him out. Uh, Campbell is uh, doing a better job of running the ball than Payne. He's got 55 yards. Randy Payne's total in yards is only 26, so it's going to be an interesting second half. And so far, Campbell is winning his battle with Payne, but the real winner is Downing. No surprise. Not much of a surprise, but when you look at the way that the coaching philosophies go, I'm not so sure that it's Stratford's defense keeping Payne from carrying the football or if it's Jerry Pig deciding he's going to work Rager just a little bit harder. And there you see the head coach of the Hunters Lane Warriors, Jerry Pig, who spent a lot of his coaching career here in Nashville with the Stratford team. He coached a lot of these guys that are now seniors on the Stratford team when he was there his last year. They were sophomores. He's now come to Hunters Lane, taking over the program here and three and six last year. This year he is now seven and oh yep. and fighting for the District 12 AAA championship tonight. And they were your dark horse and going in. They were in. my dark horse going in. And I very rarely get one, you know, the old no, no, blind hog finds an acre every now and you then. You picked MTSU. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And I also picked the New York Giants on the first night of Monday Night Football when we had real life football. There you see Bob Leach, the other talented coach in our ball game tonight. Two great coaches, two great high school football teams. We're about ready for the third quarter to begin. Hunters Lane will be kicking off to Stratford. Stratford will get the football. They've been the victim of turnovers. There you see the deep men, Campbell, back there, number 21, the most talented and dangerous running back of the group. It's going to be taken by Hodges on the five-yard line. Hodges up to the 20 to the 25. Yard line. He got up to about the 23 before he's finally knocked down by the Hunters Lane defensive unit. So Stratford's going to take over first and 10 on the 23 yard line, setting the backfield for you. Corey Fleming, the quarterback, number 10. The fullback, Ronald Downing. Duncan was telling you about him. 9.7 yards a carry tonight, number 34. Joseph Campbell, Metro's lead. Game tonight, number 21 is the tailback. The wingback, number eight, Greg Hodges. First and ten for Stratford. Ball on the 23 yard line. We're all tied up 7 7. And there's Downing. Gets the call, gets the handoff, carries it for a couple of three yards. Brad Bennett coming up off the bottom along with number 60. Looks like Scott McDonald as they unpile everything. 67 instead of 60. That is Toby Grisham. Second down and about four yards to go. Downing with another hefty chunk of yardage. So Stratford would really like to drive the ball down the field and put it in the end zone right here and establish an advantage in this ball game. Second down six for Stratford. There's Downing again. A good fake faked me off and they gave the ball to to Campbell. Yeah. They're not supposed to do that, Duncan. First down too. Nice carry by Joe Campbell. Good play that time. Yep. You're not supposed to fake off the announcer. And when that happens, you've done a pretty good job. And the uh, announcer <laughs> gets mad. No, the announcer doesn't get <laughs> mad. He just gets embarrassed. It's not yeah. supposed to happen like that. 
Nice play that time. They put it in Downing's belly, and he's running so well that the defense reacted and enabled Campbell to go off tackle for the first down. First and 10, Stratford. Ball now up to the 36-yard line. This time it is Campbell getting the call, and he breaks it through the defensive secondary, and he's off to the races. Huh. Good defensive play that time, coming up from his defensive, or his linebacking position, 42 Avis Eakes, saved a touchdown for Hunter's Lane, a big, big run by Joseph Campbell. Let's watch on the replay here. Joseph Campbell breaks some tackles. It doesn't look like he's got much there, does it, folks? I tell you what, this kid has got balance, so much balance. And that time he makes the nice cut to the outside. You see Forehand not able to bring him down. Eeks makes a saving tackle there. He doesn't get him at six points. What balance. Super Man. balance. And I made a comment Woo. earlier in the cable cast tonight that he probably would be a defensive player. He may be a very big offensive player in the college ranks. That time, time they is Hodges. Yeah. Tried something. I, I was talking <laughs> to their assistant coach up here about <laughs> so basically, said, you called nah. that play, right? Well, no, I, he said it was nah. real effective there, buddy. We're not blocking that play real well. <laughs> yeah. Well, Hodges' first carry shows what an idiot I can be. Second down, ten for Stratford. <laughs> Ball now on the 30-yard line of Hunter's Lane, and so far, when they've gotten down in this area, Doctor, the turnover has really hurt the Spartans. Yeah, hurt the Spartans. They've turned it over three times. This time, Campbell tries and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Hit made by 38, Brian Rager. Good hit. The senior fullback slash defensive end for Hunter's Lane. Let's watch the replay. You see Rager will beat the blocking off the line and get right past Downing, who was looking to block him, but Rager beat Downing to the punch that time. Battle of the fullbacks and defensive ends, huh? And right now they're playing opposite each other offensively and defensively. Yeah. When we look at the numbers, we talk about Rager and Downing, then we turn around and defensive on the other side. It's Rager and Downing once again. Hodges coming in motion. Third and 10. Stratford going to put the ball in the air. That's Fleming looking across the middle. His receiver falls down, but catches the Oh, what the a football. catch. What, what a catch. catch oh. by Greg Hodges laying Woo. on his back on the five-yard line. What a catch. I tell you guys, I sure hope we can see this one again. <laughs> what a catch. Let's watch this one. Fleming with a nice bit of faking in the backfield. You see there, he fakes to both Downing and Campbell, who stay back and block for him. Campbell with a nice block on Rager. And Fleming firing the ball down very accurately, but Hodges falls down on the pattern and still makes the catch. Way to go, Greg. Nice play. Nice throw, too. Was done, was done so well, it almost looked planned. First and goal from the five-yard line. Ooh. That's Hodges, caught the ball on the reception just a moment ago, running from his wing back position. Brian Rager coming up to make the stop, Ooh. along with some help from 18, Tim Prince. Almost a face mask on this, but uh, no, you see the carry there. And actually it was Downing. It was Downing. But uh, boy, they grabbed at the helmet, but the side that you can grab at. Rager there having a heck of a game, number 38. Going to be second down in five. Ball on the five-yard line, second and goal. We're all tied up seven to seven. It's Campbell to the outside. His quickness gets him to the corner. Touchdown. Stratford goes out on top now, 13 to seven. Joseph Campbell, what an athlete. What an athlete. He just beat the pursuit again. There's just no way. He's so quick. You got to see him play basketball. You want to see something. I tell you, nicknamed <laughs> Frog. Yep, Frog Campbell, and he ran into the outside that time, 21. So our score now 7, uh, 13 to 7 in favor of Stratford coming on to attempt the extra point that would make it 14 7. Lamont Stone, number 66. There you see him. Timeout Stratford. Timeout Stratford. I wonder why. Let's watch the replay on the touchdown. You see Joseph Campbell just burns it outside. The fake to Downing freezes the linebacker. They look for him a little bit, and Campbell just zooms into the end zone. No chance. You see Hancock trying to get to him, but no way. No yeah, as John Ward would say, give him six. He's got it. It's 13 to 7. Joseph Campbell showing why he is Nashville's leading rusher coming into tonight's ball game. Randy Payne has been basically uh, non-existent after yep. the first couple of carries of the ball game. All of the offensive, it's not over. <laughs> yardage has been eaten up by Brian Rager. We're a long way from being over. Yep. The scoring started early in the first quarter when the Hunters Lane Warriors punched it in from the three-yard line. Brian Rager going in there. 
by the way, we want to invite you all after any game we do here on Viacom 36 to join us at the nearest Mr. Gaddy's for a great post-game feed. They just take great care of us. And after working these games, especially our crew, that nice heaping pile of pizza on the plate for Mr. Gaddy's, some of the best in town, tastes great. Ooh. Lamont Stone's attempt for the extra point is good, so it's now 14 to 7. Stratford on top of Hunter's Lane. Right now, they're leading this District 12 AAA battle. The championship will be decided tonight. Stratford and Hunter's Lane, 14 to 7. And of course, Hunter's Lane now with their chance to get their hands back on the ball. And Stratford with a nice opening drive. That's exactly what Bob Leach wanted to do. And Lamont Stone, boy, I tell you, he. He gets his foot into the ball, doesn't he? You know, we talked about it on numerous occasions, Duncan, the fact that Stratford is really undefeated if they have Lamont Stone in the yep. opening game against Absolutely. White's Creek. And I think Richard Kerr would admit that. I think too, so, too. Coach of White's Creek. Because when you look at all the statistical <clears throat> numbers from that ball game, Stratford won every number that was available. The only one they didn't win, there you see Randy Payne, was the number on the scoreboard. And yep. as we all know, that's the one that always comes, uh, comes away as the one that counts. Lamont Stone, number 66, an offensive lineman, defensive lineman slash kicker for Stratford. <laughs> one of the talented players for the Spartans. He gets his foot into this one. Randy Payne takes the ball on his 13-yard line. He's got a hole. Got a lot of running room to the left. Good defensive pursuit. Campbell over there to help out on the stop, along with a whole host of other guys from Stratford. Looks like Brian Ward, 86, in there to make stops. So. Going to be first and 10 on the 30-yard line for Hunter's Lane. Scoring drive, nine plays, 78 yards, about four and a half minutes, five-yard run by Mr. Everything, Joseph Campbell, who is certainly going to leg up on his lead in Metro rushing statistics tonight. Sure, surely is. Uh, Corey Fleming has a touchdown for the first score. Campbell getting the second, second down, or first down for Hunter's Lane, going the 30-yard line. As Randy Payne trying the wide side of the Hunter's Lane offensive line picked up a couple of yards. Greg Hodges coming up to make the stop. If, if I'll tell you something, it'll be a tragedy if major colleges overlook Joe Campbell because he's only 175 pounds. Yeah, right, Payne, Payne will definitely be recruited next year heavily. Uh, Luck and uh, Hancock on the line for Hunter's Lane, certainly. Rager's got possibilities, but for the Stratford kids, Campbell, as small as he is, could play free safety for anybody, I think. Sure could, and, and it's a, what an advantage your team would have having this guy return oh, yeah. kicks. Yeah, or punts because he does uh, so many things once he catches the football. Second down and nine, Hunter's Lane. This time, Rager gets the call. Up nice over run. the 35, about the 36-yard line. Nice piece of running that time by Brian Rager. He is one tough cookie. And uh, it's very difficult, you know, not to pay a lot of attention to Randy Payne, as good as he is. And when you do that, you open up the middle. And Rager's taking advantage of it. Once again, Hunter's Lane calls a timeout. Jerry Pig wanting to go out and talk to his troops to see what they can uh, get accomplished here. 627 left to go third quarter. We're going to take a break and remind you the score. Stratford leading Hunter's Lane 14 to 7. You're watching the best in high school football on Viacom Cablevision Channel 30. All here, Duncan. Third down and four. 627 left to go in our third quarter. Stratford took the opening drive and marched it right down the field for a touchdown. We'll see seven. Hunter's Lane not doing real well on third down conversions tonight. They need to improve that to win this game. Stratford letter perfect. For Stratford's made so many long games on first and second down, they haven't had as many third down opportunities. They haven't had the ball as much as, as Hunter's Lane has tonight. No, they've been able to pick up most of their good yardage on the second down play with uh -huh. Ronald Downing coming off right tackle and Ronald Downing going off left tackle. Third down and four. Big, big play for Hunter's Lane. The option play, Randy Payne getting the pitch to the outside. He shows us his speed just yeah. a little bit, getting outside, picking up the first down. Good call. Crossing over the 40-yard line to the 43-44. Randy Payne showing us his quickness to the outside. Good blocking, too, that time, and it enabled him to get outside. They really did block down on the outside linebacker and defensive end to spring him. Let's see if we can see it. Do you think they're trying possibly to run too much in the middle with Randy Payne? Here we see him getting to the outside and having pretty yep. good success with it. Yep, you can see that uh, McClanahan's late getting over there. That's because there was a good brush block on him. First and 10. I think so. Ball on the 44-yard line. Hunter's Lane trails by seven oh, points. And this time they tried the same play to the right. Good defensive play coming up from his 
safety position, Greg Hodges. Offensively and defensively, the little guy's getting the job done, mm -hmm. isn't he? Let's look at it. You want to see how to tackle somebody? You want to show your son or daughter how to tackle? What the heck? Daughters play in neighborhood games, too. Right there. You got to get him around the calves. Because once you grab him there, he can't move his legs. And guess what, folks? He's going to go down. So many people try to tackle on the upper body, and they just slide right off a powerful run. Don't you agree? I'm sure all the ladies that are watching our show tonight appreciate that, Duncan. <laughs> Second down and 12 for Hunter's Lane. <laughs> Matt Dick, the quarterback, Brian Rager, and Randy Payne in the booth here. Good defensive huh. pressure, and the ball is batted down by the defensive front mm. of Stratford. I'm sorry, I, I missed the number that knocked it down. Matt Dick. Roselle Wilson. That was a pretty, pretty play. Let's watch it right here. Roselle Wilson almost came up with the interception, I believe. We'll check it on the replay for you. You see the fake to Rager that time. And coming in to help block is Randy Payne. Uh, you see almost sacked right there by Edward Williams, but he gets into the pocket. Nope. There we go. That looked like Lamont Stone. Yes, it was. Sure Big left hand of Stone. Lamont Stone, 66, getting a mid up on it. Third down, 12, Hunter's Lane. Ball still on the 44-yard line. Matt Dick looking to throw. Oh. This time it's knocked down again Lamont. by Lamont Stone. <laughs> He just kind of gets in the way, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He, he doesn't want passes in his neighborhood. It's like little mosquitoes, that ball. He's 240 pounds of beef attacking the football right here. You watch right here. Stone just playing off the block and jumps up, and there's no way that pass is going anywhere but the ground. Nice play. Crucial series for Hunter's Lane, unable to convert the big third down situation. Fourth down and 12, bend it on to do, punny, do, do the punting. Joseph Campbell, the dangerous return man. He's deep for Stratford. Stratford came after good it. Kick. Good kick by Bennett. Joseph Campbell calling for the fair catch, and he gets it on the 23-yard line. Smart move by Campbell because there were five orange jerseys, and a high kick like that is very difficult to catch it and also think about running it back. So Campbell did the smart thing. Right now, Hunter's Lane needs a big defensive series in order to get uh -huh. the ball back in pretty good field position. 5-0-1 to see the vital statistics there. Stratford on top, 14-7. You know, Hunter's Lane, one thing they are very well drilled in, among other things, is kick coverage. Both their punting and kickoff teams have really, really done well tonight. First and 10 for Stratford on the 23-yard line. Corey Fleming still your quarterback. Ronald Downing, Hodges, and Campbell in the backfield. That's Campbell the left side. Continuing to keep those legs moving, and I'm impressed with the way he continues to run with his head down, keeping the legs moving and breaking tackles. Oh, yeah. That, the forehand was in on that. A lot of people were in on that. <laughs> That's because he, Tim cause he carried him a couple of yards. Let's watch those legs. Nice faking here by Corey Fleming, that quarterback. You see Campbell going through. He just won't be brought down. I mean, <laughs> five Hunters Lane people it took to bring him down that time. Picked up the first down, so Stratford's offense now getting in gear and getting on track. They've had three costly turnovers in the first half, none here in the second half. Joseph Campbell having a, a good evening. 97 yards for the fullback Downing in the first half. There he is carrying the football this time. Good game. Getting it up to the 37-yard line before he's finally stopped by Bennett, 48, tripped up initially. Stratford eating up a lot of the clock. Four minutes and 10 seconds to go in the third quarter, and this type of running attack really eats up the time. Still a lot of time left. You've got four minutes left to go in the third quarter plus the entire fourth quarter, and right. the way this game has shifted some, you know, Hunter's Lane's still in the contest. Oh, absolutely. Second down. <laughs> no question about that. No question about that one. Ronald Downing getting the fake. Now Joseph Campbell to the outside. And here we see the quickness and the speed of Campbell. Because <laughs> he just outran Tim Prince that time. Getting way well, downfield about the 35-yard line. Finally knocked out of bounds by Avis Eeks, number 42. And once again, Campbell breaks off the big game. What a, what a runner. Watch this. And he really, you know, there's a little bit of interference out there for him, but not a heck of a lot. You see the Hunter's Lane pursuit. But watch Campbell when he gets out there. And look what he does here, folks. See, he just slips a couple of tackles before he's finally knocked out of bounds by Eeks. Eeks is a quick kid. He doesn't look that quick, but he, he can move from linebacker. First and 10, Joseph Campbell, 125 yards. So <laughs> most of those coming here in the second half. First and 10, there's Downing. Boy, finding a lot of running room. 
finally tripped up by Randy Payne, number 36. Also give credit to Hancock. Hancock, excuse me, is 26 on 36. Big run by Downing. Big, big run. This is just a very special high school football team you are watching here in the white jerseys. I mean, not taking anything away from anybody else, but I mean, this is just one special team here, and we're watching them just run the ball all over the field. Very strong fundamentally. They're showing it right now. Knocking on the door once again. Downing the pitch to Campbell. Nice going Deep nowhere. Defense. Good defensive play by, it looks like, Brad Bennett, 48, coming yep. up to make the play. A lot of help by number 20, Tim Scott, also in there. Yeah, Brad Bennett, excellent athlete from his defensive end position. You see Campbell out here, and he cannot outrun Brad Bennett. You see Brad Bennett going to the outside right there, slips a block, and he catches up with Campbell and brings him down. Number 99, Denny, Greg Denny, missed a block on Bennett, enabling Bennett to make the stop. Second down, 14 for Stratford. Ball on the 20-yard line now. And Hunters Lane calls another timeout. I don't know how many they have left, but I uh, wouldn't assume too many in this ball game, would you? Like we said earlier, Jerry Pig's going to use all of those allotted to him, and he uses another one here. Two minutes, 36 seconds to go in our third quarter. Stratford on top, 14 to 7. District 12, AAA. I tell you, our playback times for this and all the Dandy High School games, we've got like next week's game also, if you're looking ahead for the Whites Creek uh, Father Ryan game, this game and that one and all of them. Friday nights at 10.30, Saturday mornings at 9.30. My favorite time to sit in the armchair and watch <laughs> the high school game before the college games come on. And Wednesday night at 7, if you head out of town for the weekend and you still want to catch up on the high school game of the week on Viacom Cablevision Channel 36, Wednesday night's just for you at 7 o'clock. And, of course, next week we've got a great game. It'll be at Vanderbilt Stadium. Whites Creek Cobras against the Father Ryan Fighting Irish in a AAA District 11 AAA battle. And that should be a dandy of a game uh, as well. Uh, that'll have a lot to say about the positioning in the playoffs as well. You, know, you talk about the Stratford White Street game early on. When you've been in Nashville as long as we have and you get used to having <laughs> my friends, <laughs> to having Stratford, uh, Hunters Lane, and White Street all in the same district, and then Stratford having a loss, but it not being a district loss this year because of White Street right. going to District 11 Triple A. Second down 14. Fleming dropping back, looking for a receiver being pressured. He's going to run. He's got some blockers out in front of him. Makes a good move to his left before he's finally knocked out of bounds. Randy Payne came up to knock him out on about the one, two yard line. Pretty run by Corey Fleming. What a run. Super run by the junior quarterback, Corey Fleming, number 10. He'll get a first down and goal right here. You see Fleming going back. He doesn't see any of his receivers open. He almost throws the ball then, but then sees a nice opening and Heads downfield, cuts back very nicely, out, races the pursuit, and gets all the way to the one-yard line before he's knocked out. First and goal, Stratford. They could move ahead by 14 if they punch it in. Jamie Forehand over there uh, involved in the stop along with Randy Payne, 36. So it's first and goal for Stratford. Number 10, Corey Fleming calling the numbers. He calls his own once again, trying to get it into the end zone. Touchdown, his second one of the night. Now it's 20-7 to seven in favor of Stratford. Corey Fleming again getting a good call from Bob Leach. Let's not risk the turnover. Let's just punch it in, and they do. And it's 20 to 7, and could be 21 to 7 momentarily. I just want to take a moment to compliment Hunters Lane High School on the hospitality we've had tonight, and also the most beautiful press box by far that we have been in this season. What a gorgeous press box! Nice stadium in the scenic bowl. Ah, oh, it's been fun. Lamont Stone on for the extra point. That's good. 21 to 7. We're talking about a team that is just beginning a tradition. Hunters Lane, this is the oh, first man. year that they've even had a chance to play here. They had to play all of their games on the road last right. year. So they didn't have a place to call their own. Now they do, and they're doing it well. It's a nice stadium. Trailing right now 21-7, to 7, but they're undefeated coming in. And we've still got a little bit of time left in the third quarter and the whole fourth quarter to bring oh, you yeah. tonight. Hunters Lane and Stratford, 21-7 to 7 in favor of the Spartans. Really good looking school. Let's look at the touchdown again. Corey Fleming with a long count. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Corey Fleming's uh, scramble that gets him close to the touchdown. And this was the key run. You see right there, the interference is going one way, and Fleming says, uh, -uh I'm going the other way. I think I got a better opening that way. And he 
just about pounds it in and then does on the next play. 21-7, Stratford on top. Stone into the football, going to be carrying back to Randy Payne on the 10-yard line. Going up the middle, got some blockers, cuts back to his right. Good play. My, 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 Defensively my, over there by, my, looks my, like number my. 43, Amos. Brian Avis. Yeah. Brian Amos, Avis, Avis Eats. We've got a couple of great yeah. games in this ball game tonight, don't we? Yeah, we do. That was a pretty hit. His pain looked like he was about ready to take off up the right side. And uh, Brian Amos with a key tackle right there. He's a little guy. Saw him before the game. He's my size, but without all the beef. <laughs> I was going to say, he is a little guy then, isn't he? Yeah. Two minutes to go, third quarter. I'm just that little guy. <laughs> First and 10, Hunters late. Ball on the 29-yard line. Trailing in the ball game, 21 to 7. There's Brian Rager. Oh, I tell you, it's, it's going to take. Looks like a rugby match out there, Duncan. I don't know that anybody's going to break him down. <laughs> Brian Rager carrying Power. the ball and half of the Stratford defensive unit up to the 40-yard line. Rager trying to get the fans exalted, getting them ready, getting them fired up. He knows that his team's not out of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's look at the Stratford scoring drive. Lucky seven there, seven plays, 77 yards. It's about three and a half minutes on possession. Fleming with his second touchdown of the game. A minute 30 to go, third quarter. First and 10, Hunters Lane ball on the 40-yard line, trying to get back in it, trailing by 14. It's Rager once again keeping it on the ground, up to about the 44 before he's finally shoved back by the left side of the defensive line for Stratford, Ed Williams over there, Ronald Downing, Lamont Stone coming up to make the stop. Everybody on the team <laughs> ended up making that stop. Are Probably would have been would have been easier just to name the players not involved in the tackle. <laughs> this kid's a powerful kid. Second down five, running hard inside of a minute to go third quarter. Ball on the 45-yard line of Hunter's Lane. Rager gets it. Stratford's defensive front gets him. Edward Williams that time with a nice play. Edwards number 50. He's a senior, 210 pounds from his left defensive tackle position. 30 seconds to go, third quarter, 21 to 7 in favor of Stratford. And right now they've got the inside track on the District 12 AAA title. All of it on the line tonight as these two teams coming in undefeated, ranked 1 and 2 in the district. We've seen a well of a football game. We've still got another quarter to go. Uh -huh. Third down five. Randy Payne gets the call. Bangs his way up to the 48-yard line. Going to end up about a yard and a half short of the first down. That's going to be the last play of the third quarter. Tackle made by 65, Brian Three. So we're going to take a break at the end of the third period as the Hunters Lane crowd tries to get their team going. 21-7, uh, to 7. Stratford on top here in the ball game. You're watching the best in high school football on Viacom Cablevision Channel 36. It's a ball game. Stratford ahead of Hunters Lane by the score of 21 to 7. Duncan Stewart and Rick Baumgartner along the way with you. Hunters Lane with a fourth down and two yards to go. And they're going to drop back in punt position. Although I wouldn't be at all surprised to see a fake right here with them behind by... 14 points. Brad Bennett, nope, he is going to kick the ball. Nice high spiral, driving way down, way down, and they're going to down this baby inside the 10 yard line at about the six. So, with a nice play, and Stratford expecting the fake had all their defensive men up on the line of scrimmage. They're ahead by 14 points. They could afford to risk that, but Brad Bennett with a nifty kick. 40 plus yards, no return. Boy, that's the kind of kicking you like. This kid can really punt. He's a prospect. So now Stratford will take over. Get up, First and 10, deep in their own territory at their own five yard line. Actually, six yard line. Thank you very much, Duncan. You're welcome. You did a great job. Thank you. <clears throat> First and 10, Stratford. As Duncan told you, ball about the six. 11.30 to go, fourth quarter. There's Joseph Campbell. Getting it out across the 10 to the 13. I tell you what. Super running. Yeah, super running and a super saving tackle right there. Toby Grisham, 67. That would have been six points, I'm telling you right now, off that spin, because he had a funnel right up the center of that defense right there. One thing Hunter's Lane is doing 
right now, Duncan, is they're getting good penetration by the defensive front, but right now they're over pursuing. Yeah. And once Campbell and Downing and Hodges get into the defensive secondary, it's just a foot race. Mm -hmm. It's tough to keep up with these guys. They're pretty talented. Second down four. Corey Fleming still your quarterback. Hodges moves into his wingback position. There's Ronald Downing running with his head down, banging off a couple of would-be tacklers. Looks like a first down. Tackle made by Richard Hancock, 72. But not before the first down is gathered in by Mr. Downing. Let's watch on the replay. Downing is 200 pounds. He's pretty powerful. And you see right there, he gets through the initial hole. He's got the first down right now. And he runs right into the arms of Mr. Hancock. There's no way he's uh, an 85-pound disadvantage. In no way he's going to play off that very favorably. <laughs> Kid Hancock's quick for his size. Not bad. He's a junior, 6'3", 285, 290. He's got another year. Mm -hmm. Oh, Hunter's Lane's going to be awesome next year. First and 10. Stratford with the ball on the 13-yard line. There's Downing, and he's got some running room, breaking back to the left. Good defensive play by Joel Hancock, 26, as he brings down the fleet-footed fullback, Ryan Ronald Downing. Downing's got a real, you know where he's fast is his first first couple of steps. You watch, he's not a sprinter really, but he gets his first couple of steps through there with power. He reads blocks very well, but once he gets into the secondary, you know, he's not a speed merchant like Campbell, but he doesn't have to be. Big first down, ball now on the 41 yard line. Reminds me of an old saying that John Wooden, the great coach of the UCLA Bruins once said, be quick, but don't hurry. And Ronald Downing does that well. He has the ball again, and he's in the secondary. The ball is loose. Stratford being able this time to come yeah. up with a football, a good break for them. Downing running into the secondary was hit. Fumbled the football, ball now on the 50-yard line. Recovery made by Brian Ward, 86, as he trots off the field. Let's watch the replay. Downing up around 158 yards now after this carry. He would have been over 160 had he not fumbled the ball. See, what a nice cutback and a great crackback block right there. But, and I was trying to see, I think that was the kid that recovered the fumble. But right here, Downing is double hit, and he just loses the ball coming in to recover it, as you say. Joseph Campbell on the second and one gets close to the first mm -hmm. down marker. And across midfield to the 49-yard line of Hunter's Lane. And right now, what Stratford is doing is they're keeping the ball on the ground. They're also keeping the clock moving, trying yeah. to eat up some of the time, leading 21 to 7. It looks like a first down, but they're going to measure. Um, boy, I'll tell you, it's fun to watch the Stratford line on some of those runs by Downing because they do make some nice blocks, nice blocks, especially type of turnaround blocks where you look like you're going to lead the sweep and then you just turn right around and go the other way and block the defensive end. And they've got it by the length of the football. It's going to be first and 10 for Stratford ball on the 49-yard line. Leading, as we mentioned, in our game, 21 to 7. Hunters Lane got on the scoreboard first with a three-yard run by Brian Rager. Stratford came back to tie it in the second quarter. Corey Fleming going off the right side of the quarterback keeper for the touchdown, making it 7-7 at the half. In the second half of our ball game, quarterback Corey Fleming has scored a touchdown, as has tailback. Joseph Campbell as we stand 21 to 7, first and 10. There's Campbell getting up close to the 45, call it the 46-yard line of Hunter's Lane before he's finally brought down by Hancock. Uh, getting up off the bottom of the pile along with Brian Rager, number 38. Bob Leach content to have those three and four-yard gains right now. It's 8.25 and counting in the ball game, and he just wants to count off that clock. Right now the pressure is on Hunter's Lane. They've got to get the football back. They've got a hold. They've got a score. They've got to hold again and get the football back. A lot of pressure on them to get a couple of quick touchdowns and get back in the football game. Second down, eight. Clock continues to move. 8.08 to go in our ball game. Hodges with the carry, it looks like this time. Not getting anywhere, maybe a yard. Up to the 45-yard line of Hunter's Lane. And uh, be about a third and six. What are you calling here, Coach? Downing to the right. Or Downing to the left. Yeah. Ronald Downing is going to be the man I give the ball to. Swing to the right. Swing to the left. Look at, look at Campbell. 20 carries, 132 yards, and Downing's got 158 on 15 carries. My, my. Ronald Downing the fake, the pitch back to Campbell, and 
Hunters Lane snuffed it out. Good play by number 18, Tim Prince, coming up from his cornerback position to stop Campbell for a loss. And Hunters first Lane's punt. able to hold the first punt of the night by for Stratford. Stratford. Yeah. That's pretty remarkable. Isn't it McClanahan? The punter is a pretty good one, too. But first punt of the night, and it's seven minutes to go. Stratford has been very effective. Yeah, they have. Uh, controlling the football. They fumbled the ball three times. And are now getting off their first punt. Number 82, McClanahan. There you see Randy Payne back to receive the punt for Hunters Lane. A low punt taken by Randy Payne. They've set up a reverse. Avis seeks out in front. Runs into his own man up about the 25. So <coughs> Hunters Lane is going to take over first and 10 on their own 25-yard line. 6.42 to go in our ball game. Stratford on top, 21 to 7. Nice tackle by Denny on that play. He didn't get fooled at all. And Hunters Lane is 75 yards from Pater, but still in some time. If they could break one right here, you know, 6.41, break one, stop Stratford, and go back and make it a real exciting finish. Need to put it in the end zone here, possibly try the onside kick, recover. Uh -huh. Get it back in again. It's entirely within the, the realm of reality. A lot of movement on the offensive line by Hunters Lane, but I believe that was a shift, and we'll have to see what the officials say as to whether or not they were drawn offside, and I'm speaking of Stratford, or whether or not they went off on their own. Let's look at some stats here. First down, Stratford 16, Hunters Lane 9. Hunters Lane had a one first down edge, I believe, at the end of the first half, so Stratford has really been rolling. And tough break here, Hunters Lane with a five yard penalty. False start on the offense. Still first down now. Still False first start, down. as you just heard. Whistle, gentlemen. It'll be still first down, first and 15. Right. 6.26 to go in the ball game. Ball now back on the 21-yard line from the 26. Matt Dick going to have to put the ball in the air, and Lamont Stone has him. Ah. Ball in and out of the hands of Brian Rager. What a shame there. Dick with a guy all over him. Still managed to keep his composure and hit Bennett right on the numbers. Nice pass by Dick, and Brad couldn't hold on to it. Tough break for Hunter's Lane. Lamont Stone was all over Matt Dick that time, and he was able, as you mentioned, to yep. keep his composure, find the receiver, and put it right on the numbers. And the guy you want to catch the football, just unable to bring it in. Matt Dick is a very impressive young athlete. Good quarterback, throws a nice ball. I have to throw a lot of them right here. Second down, 15, Hunter's Lane probably Needing to get the ball in the air as much as they can. A couple of wide receivers. You've got Bennett at the bottom of your screen. Seems like a little bit of a mix-up in the backfield. Yeah. Matt Dick having to carry the football, and I'm sure that's not what the coaches had designed. 82, McClanahan, along with Edward Williams, 50, coming up to be involved in the stop. Penalty marker on the play. And it's going to be an illegal procedure call, illegal motion against the offense. Let's take a look at this, see if we can pick it up. I couldn't, unless it was on the left there. It might have been a quick start left guard, but I really couldn't tell from this angle. But I can tell that McClanahan snuffed that play out big time. I wonder if they're going to refuse the penalty. Yep, they are. Good to decline. And that's a good move because now it's third and long. Third and 15, yeah. 608 to go. It puts a lot of pressure now on the Hunters Lane offense to come yeah. up with a play that's going to pick up that first down and keep the drive alive. If they have to give the ball back to Stratford here, it's a big, big turnover. Look for Campbell to try and get an interception right here. Third down, 15, ball on the 20 yard line. Nope. Ryan Rager gets the call. He carries the ball across the 20 up to the 22, where it's going to be fourth down. And let's call it 11. Stop made by 82, Kurt McClanahan, the senior linebacker for the Spartans. Jay had a little help from James Devers, too. Good, quick uh, defensive unit at first, Stratford. They've really played well tonight. There you see the Hunters Lane sidelines trying to figure out what they can do to get back in the ball game, trailing 21 to 7. Headed on to do the punting. Stratford not sending anyone back. They're not sure that. Bennett is indeed going to punt the football. Joseph Campbell is the closest man to the action. They are going to punt the ball. Good punt that time by Bennett. The ball bounds back toward the 50-yard line before it is finally recovered by the Hunters Lane Warriors on the 47. So that's where Stratford is going to take the ball. 4.58 to go left in our ball game. 21 to 7. The Spartans on top, and they'll start first and 10 on the 47. 
So, tell you, it's just uh, one marvelous football team, the, the Stratford Spartans. They are, as I have said all along, and I really believe this, not, I mean, Hunters Lane is one of the two or three best teams in town, and to that boy, that's to their credit after just two years in existence. But Stratford is, without question, right now, the best team in town. And they're showing it here tonight. And if Hunters Lane or White's Creek and Stratford would have been again, I'm sure the outcome of that game would be a little different. They're standing so. on first down, getting up close to the marker. And if he doesn't pick up a first down, it's going to be second down and short. And that actually is what Bob Leach wants. Ball control <laughs> offense for the Stratford Spartans right now. He wants to be just short. The clock keeps rolling that way. Keeps it going. Going to come up about a yard short. Yep. It's going to be second down and one. 4.15 to go in our ball game. Duncan Stewart. I'm Rick Baumgartner. We're glad you're along with us. Hunters Lane and Stratford. Yeah. Join us after the game at Mr. Gaddy's. Yeah, yeah, come on out. Now, if you're watching this on Wednesday night, you should have been there four days ago. We'll see you this Friday. That's right. Joseph Campbell getting the call, getting stacked up a little bit. Good defensive play by Brad Bennett. He stuck, stuck it up in there and slowed Hodges down, who also slowed down Downing. Let's watch the Stratford line. You want to see a line blowing another line off? Watch the Stratford line right there. I mean, this is a play, a carry by Downing, but I mean, they're blowing Hunter's lane off at this point in the game by a good three or four yards, and that's what's giving them the great yardage. I and mean, they've really won the battle of the trenches against a bigger line. Because the Hunters Lane line is bigger than that line is. They sure are offensively and defensively. Right. They are going to measure. See, they're going to be a first down or a third down. It's going to be a third down and a millimeter. It's going to be a third down and a credit card. Nope, oh, it's, it's going to be a first down. down. Okay. First and ten. Forget the credit card. Forget it. Put and it on the card. 3.39 to go. And, uh, you know, we look around at the Hunters Lane crowd right now, and they look pretty disappointed. But, hey, nothing to be disappointed about. 7-1 and one if this holds, this, this score holds. Uh, in your second year, going to the state playoffs, improving every game. Hey, nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing at all. Jerry Pigley on the sidelines. You see some of the crowd that is on hand tonight. First and 10. And that time they got to Ronald Downey. Scott McDonald, 60, coming in to make the stop. Yep. That's the first time they've really gotten to Ronald Downey behind the line of scrimmage all night long. When you talk about going up against a team like Stratford, Duncan, Dunk, this, this team is probably one of the strongest teams in the Middle Tennessee area, and you hold them to 21 points. They've run up some impressive oh, yeah. scores against other teams. Uh, and I think it's going to make Hunters Lane a little bit better going into the playoffs, knowing that they have to play well against some quality teams in order to come away with a victory. There's Downing again. This time he's brought down by 67 for Hunters Lane. Toby Grisham in there along with Richard Hancock, 72. Ronald Downing, a big, talented senior fullback for the Stratford Spartans. 225 to go. And counting, there you see Bob Leach, the head coach over at Stratford. Duncan, he has done a great job the last couple of years since taking over there from Jerry Pig when Jerry <laughs> Pig came over to Hunter's Lane. An odd twist. Third down and seven. The deep pitch to Campbell, and he finds some running room. He gets the first down before he's finally knocked down. Looks like Joel Pretty Hancock, right. 26, coming up to make the stop on on Joseph Campbell, and he picks up a first down, stays in bounds, keeps the clock, or excuse me, gets out of bounds, stopping the clock with 1.57 to go. Inside of two minutes left to go in our ball game, and Jerry Pig is going to call a timeout to get his defensive unit set back together. 21 to 7, there you see the time remaining in the bottom right-hand corner of our screen, a minute 56, 21-7 in favor of Stratford. Folks, if you're enjoying these Viacom Cablevision telecasts on Channel 36, we'd love to hear from you. Get some comments. You might have a way that you think we could improve these broadcasts, and we're certainly open to suggestions. Just drop us a line. Viacom Cablevision, Box 557 in Nashville, Tennessee, 37208. Stratford now with 18 first downs to 9 for Hunters Lane. Campbell running wild. What are we got on Campbell now? Yeah. I'm looking at Brother Timothy, our fine statistician here. Looking at first downs, Duncan, the Hunters Lane only had seven coming into the second half. They picked up two here in the second half. 145 yards for Joseph Campbell. Not a bad effort. 23 carries. 
That last carry was for 15 yards. And if my unofficial statistics are correct, Duncan, 1,284 yards for Joseph Campbell, and he increases his lead in the Metro rushing race over Randy Payne. Payne coming in only eight yards behind has fallen well off the pace after yeah. the impressive effort tonight by the talented tailback of Stratford, Joseph Campbell, yes, 21. Indeed. Minute 56 to go here, folks. Did we just reverse roles? Yeah, a minute 56 to go, 21 to 7 in favor of Stratford. There's Ronald Downing getting into the secondary. <laughs> and he's, he's finally so a takedown by 67, Toby Grisham. And he gets a couple of three points for that, doesn't he? Yeah. Two. Two? Okay, so a They get three points. in pro wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you a few pointers about that professional wrestling. Let's look at the scoring by quarters. You see that uh, in the first half, uh, Hunters Lane struck first, 7 nothing at the first quarter. At the half, it was 7-7, seven, seven, but third quarter, all Stratford, 14 zip, and the fourth quarter's been scoreless, but Stratford knocking on the door again with a minute 20 to go. Minute 20 to go, ball on the 16-yard line. Pitch deep to Campbell. Breaks a tackle by Brad Bennett, followed up by, by Bennett as Rager comes up and slows him down, giving Bennett a chance to get back in there. Scott McDonald, number 60, also in on the play. I tell you, this is uh, from, I mean, there have been penalties, but they haven't been the chippy kind. This has been a very sportsmanlike game, very well played, very clean. There you see Bubba Spears, former Stratford baseball player, 1974, all NIL. Jerry Pig, a former Stratford high school football coach, has been at Hunter's Lane for two years. <coughs> there you see the current coaching staff over at Stratford. Bob, Bob Beach and his, and his crew, they've done a great job. Both teams need to be commended. And, well, they should be tonight. 35 seconds left. Hodges breaking it uh, into the secondary, and he stays on his feet. Good balance into the end zone for another touchdown, a late touchdown for Stratford. That's going to make it 27 to 7 in favor of the Spartans. And that one, Duncan, is not one where you say, well, we're going to call off the dogs. I mean, you just gave him the football, and he did that. He made that on his own. He made that on his own. It's not one of the situations Pretty where. Quick. You know, Bob Lee's trying to run up the score. No. I mean, that's one where you hand the ball right into the middle of the line, and he breaks it free and goes into the end zone for a touchdown. 27-7. 25 seconds left to go in our ball game tonight. The seven-game winning streak by Hunters Lane going to come to an end tonight. But the team that beat them, the new District 12 AAA champion, Stratford High School, is now 28-7. to Yep. And uh, I will see you later. I'm going to see if I can you're catch gonna, you're gonna give Bob me, Leach. You're going to give me 25 seconds on my Yeah, you do it, baby. I can do it. Stratford leading 28-7. to seven. Duncan Stewart on his way down. He's going to try to get a couple of comments from the winning coach. Let's take a look at the replay of that particular touchdown. You see Corey Fleming handing it to the first man through. Greg Hodges getting into the defensive secondary. Gets off. Bouncing off a couple of tacklers. Looks like Randy Payne just pushed him rather than trying to tackle him. Scott McDonald and Tim Prince also coming in to try to get involved in the tackle, uh, unable to knock him out of bounds before he got into the end zone. So it's now 28 to 7. Stratford looks like they're on their way. Going to be coming out uh, as District 12 AAA champions after their win tonight over Hunters Lane. There you see Lamont Stone, number 66. He's played a great game defensively, knocked down a couple of Matt Dick passes to stall a Hunter's Lane drive early in the third quarter. Deep there you see the receivers for Hunter's Lane, Randy Payne, the one in the middle, trying to keep it away from him. And Stratford having uh, some problems getting all their players out. We want to tell you about the replay, Stratford and Hunter's Lane. This game can be seen Friday nights at 10.30, also on Saturday mornings at 9.30 a.m. and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Stratford a little squid kick. Ball is bounding around, taken by Hunters Lane. Looks like they recover the ball on the 35-yard line. So with 20 seconds left to go, Hunters Lane pretty much content to run the ball game out. Not a whole lot you can get accomplished in 20 seconds, trailing by 21 points. It's been a well-played game by both schools, Hunters Lane and Stratford. Clock is now moving inside of 20 seconds, down to about 15 now. This is going to be probably the final play of the game, maybe one more in addition oh, to this. Away, away, Matt Dick away. airing it out. Pass is intended down here for 32 of Hunter's Lane. Richard Prim, the ball falls incomplete with six seconds left. Good defensive play back there by 35, it looks like, for the Stratford team. Onesimus Leslie 
coming up to make the good defensive play. Good play by number 35. Six seconds left. Hunters Lanes, players and coaching staff, nothing to be ashamed of tonight. A great performance on their part. Matt Diglin will air it out once again. Just throws it up for grabs. Last play of the game. The ball falls incomplete, and that's the way it's going to end tonight. Stratford has claimed the 12 Dis District 12 AAA Championship with a 28-7 win over the Hunters Lane Warriors. Duncan Stewart's going to be down on the field in just a moment with the winning coach. That's Bob Leach. We're going to take a break and come back and uh, tell you a whole lot more tonight, so stay with us. You're watching the best in high school football on Viacom Cablevision Channel 36. is brought to you by Cats Records and Video and Viacom Cablevision 36. More of what you're looking for. Your final score tonight, Stratford, a winner over Hunter's Lane by a score of 28 to 7 and standing down on the field with the winning coach of the Stratford Spartans, Duncan Stewart. Thank you very much, Rick Baumgartner, and it is uh, fun to be here having interviewed the winning coach the last two weeks. I'm gaining on you, buddy. I'm 3-5 and five now, and it's great to be right here with Bob Leach, the fine coach of Stratford. What a win for you guys. Thank you. Big win for us. Had a lot of fun doing it, too. Well, you know, at, at first it looked like uh, Hunter's Lane, the first uh, series, they moved it right down the field on you, and it looked like they were beating you a little bit in the trenches, but, man, you just stiffened right up, and as the game went on, you just wore them down. Hunter Lane played well. They've got a fine ball club and are a force to be reckoned with in the playoffs. Uh, yeah, they are. They, they did a great job. Has Jerry Pig done a great job in two years here or what? Oh, I certainly think he has. Jerry Pig's a fine coach. Prob probably the best in Nashville. Well, you're up there, Bob. Let's not sell ourselves short. You've got Stratford as a district champion. You were telling me for the very first time in the school's history? Right. I'm probably one of the oldest, Duncan. I don't know about the best, but I'm one of the <laughs> oldest probably. <laughs> but we, we appreciate the effort our kids gave, especially the second half. We thought they came out ready to go, and, and we played hard. Sometimes it takes us a little bit with our multiple defense orientation to get things going on defense a little bit. But Coach Old Ben and the rest of my staff did a tremendous job preparing these kids. Most of the screw-ups that happened tonight were because of me, not them. Well, there weren't that many screw-ups. You had a few turnovers that I'm sure you'd like to have back that cost you. It could have been even a wider margin of victory, in my opinion. But I'll tell you this, you did shut down Randy Payne tonight. I thought we did a good job on Randy. Uh, these are good backs. So it's a regular ball. We knew that. We weren't keen on Payne. We were just trying to play defense. Well, you did that well, and you've got some dandy backs in your backfield, and Downing and Campbell again, both over 100 yards. I look for you guys to go. I'm telling you, this is just my opinion. I look for you possibly to go all the way to the clinic bowl, and I sure hope you do. Thank you, Dunn. How about that little Hodges ball? When you give him that ball, he goes too, Dunn. Yeah, he does. That last touchdown was a dandy. He's a tough ball, but we're awfully proud of our boys. Well, best of luck the rest of the way, Bob, and I hope we get a chance to talk just like this again down the road. Oh, me too. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Bob Leach, the fine coach of Stratford High School, a big 28-7 win tonight over Hunters Lane. They are the District 12 AAA champions and the champion of play-by-play, -play, Rick Baumgartner, back at you upstairs. Thanks, Duncan. You may have won the last two, but remember the final outcome. It's still 5-3. to three. I'm on top. Looking at the final score tonight, Hunters Lane losing to Stratford 28-7. Our final of Stratford is now the District 12 AAA champions. Looking at next week's ball game, another dandy. This one in the 11 AAA uh, district, Whites Creek against Father Ryan. That game is going to be at Vanderbilt. We want to thank Stratford and Hunters Lane for your great hospitality tonight. Our executive producer is David Wilson, Kevin Mulligan, the director and producer, George Flanagan, Kenyon Russell, for Duncan Stewart and the entire staff. Good evening, everyone. <laughs>